presents our nation's colors. Please remain standing as Pastor Ronnie Barton from First Baptist Church of South Daytona offers our invocation. Our Father, we do thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your forgiveness. And Father, we thank you for the Daytona 500. Lord, it is the great American race. It is the most prestigious race of all. Lord, we pray that you will protect our military and we protect the drivers and the pit crew. And thank you again for this day. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He spent most of the last year on the road touring in support of his newest album, Behind the Light. Here to perform the national anthem is 19 Interscope recording artist, Philip Phillips. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud symbol of America, our great country, part of the pre-race festivities. And that is Challenger, a 25-year-old non-releasable bald eagle cared for by the nonprofit American Eagle Foundation. Challenger has been a free-flying ambassador for his species, traveling around the country, educating the public about the importance of conservation for the bald eagle. And we want to congratulate, that's Frank Burkhardt, his 54th straight Daytona 500. He is attending here today with his grandson, Chris Kirshner. And he told us his fondest memory over the years was during his first Daytona 500. It was back in 1961 when Fireball Roberts pulled into victory lane. That's what these drivers are trying to do. Matt Kenseth, a two-time Daytona 500 winner. 500 miles, 200 laps, one champion will celebrate.
Say the phrase birthplace of speed or the world's most famous beach and you'd be talking about Daytona. Beach racing has been synonymous with this area since 1903. But 57 years ago, a swamp land was transformed into a two and a half mile motorsports mecca. The Daytona 500, the great American race. It's the biggest, the richest, the most prestigious motorsports event. 35 different drivers have their names engraved on the trophy. Whose name will it be today? The Command, a time-honored tradition. We take you trackside here in Daytona. And now, for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal, star of the upcoming comedy Unfinished Business, Vince Vaughn. Drivers, start your engines! This is a race with favorites, long shot streamers, all drivers who have a shot in this the 57th running of the Daytona 500. We take you upstairs now to welcome in the same guys we've been working with. This is now our 15th year together. It's still working, I think. Darrell Walsh, <laughs> Mike Joy, and Larry McReynolds. Mike? Richard Petty, Cale Yarborough, Bobby Allison, Dale Jarrett. 17 wins between them. You add to that list Mario Andretti, A.J. Foyt, Darrell Waltrip, Dale Earnhardt. The icons of this sport have all starred on its biggest stage. This is the biggest day of any of the year of NASCAR. And Daryl, who do you like? Well, it, I think it'll be a battle of the titans. I really do. I think the Joe Gibbs Toyotas with Matt Kenseth and Denny Hamlin, I think those are two guys that are going to be a, a big factor in this race. We go to Hendrick Chevrolets, and you got Dale Jr. and Jimmy Johnson. They both won qualifying races. That's where your battle is going to be, right up front. Why? Well, because they got bad, fast cars. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, for every favorite, there are dark horses in the field, perhaps as many this year as any, and some can certainly surprise. Yeah, the drivers that Daryl mentioned, we've been talking about them in entire speed weeks because they've been at the top of the speed charts. But it just seems like with this 500-mile race, there's always somebody we've not been talking about. I go back to Ryan Newman in 2008, Jamie McMurray 2010, and need I remind you, rookie Trevor Bain in 2011 driving for the Wood Brothers. We talk about the favorites, but there's probably a driver just laying in the weeds. 1990, Dale Earnhardt led the white flag lap. Derek Cope went to victory lane. Ready for the 57th annual Daytona 500 on Fox.
celebration. The biggest race of the year. It is a big, big deal. Here they come. It's showtime. It's go time. This place is fast. It's intimidating. On the warmest day in Daytona Beach in over a month, we're set to run the Daytona 500. The Fox NASCAR season begins right here as they roll off pit road. Here's the Geico starting grid for today's race. Jeff Gordon has his second Daytona 500 pole next to his teammate, mate, two-time winner, Jimmy Johnson. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is a two-time 500 winner, and Matt Crafton replaces Kyle Busch. It's his first Sprint Cup start. Joey Logano has his best start ever for the 500, next to 2011 runner-up Carl Edwards. Tony Stewart has won 19 races in Daytona, but never this one. Greg Biffle, who won the summer race here in 2003. Redemption Row, Clint Boyer finished 42nd last year. Martin Truex was 43rd. Kevin Harvick is the series champion and 2007 winner. Ryan Blaney, a rookie. Casey Kane, two top 10 finishes here, and Reed Sorensen had to race his way in through the duel. Jamie McMurray, the 2010 winner, and Mike Wallace in his first 500 since 07. Landon Castle, 12th last year. Justin Allgaier has one Daytona 500 start. Cole Witt in the big race for the second time, and Danica Patrick starting for the rear third of four years. Paul Menard, sixth in 2012. Ryan Newman, the 08 winner. Michael McDowell, seventh year last July. Regan Smith in 2013, finished seventh in the 500. J.J. Yaley, first time he's been in the race in two years, and David Gilliland, third in 2011. Michael Annette's making his second start in the 500. David Reagan won the summer race here in 11. Kyle Larson in the race for the second time, as is Austin Dillon. They battled for Sunoco Rookie of the Year last year. Ty Dillon, a rookie. Ricky Stenhouse, Jr., seventh a year ago. Eric Almirola won here in July, and Michael Waltrips won the 500 twice. As has Matt Kenseth. He's there with Johnny Sauter. First time he's in the 500 in eight years. Trevor Bain, the 2011 winner. And Sam Hornish returns to Sprint Cup full-time. Brad Keselowski, a past series champion, and A.J. Allmendinger. Then Casey Mears and Denny Hamlin, who both have runner-up finishes in the 500. And Bobby Labonte, the runner-up in 1998. With great pleasure, I want to talk to the guy on the pole, four-time champion, 92 wins, Jeff Gordon. It's Daryl Waltrip in the Fox Sports 1 booth. Buddy, Fox Sports 1 here. You got a copy? 1040, W, I got you. Jeff, you're on the pole. You're getting ready to take the green flag for the great American race, the Daytona 500, for the last time. Half of the garage area, all the drivers over there say you're their hero. What's going through your head, buddy? I'm just excited about this opportunity. I got one last shot at winning another Daytona 500. I'm just taking it all in. Uh, just so proud of this race team and the race car they've given me. And we've got an excellent shot at winning this thing. So uh, now it's time to get focused and go do our job. All right, my friend. Well, good luck. We'll be watching. What a storybook ending on the pole, and if you could pull it off. 10-4. Yeah, looking forward to it. it uh, it's going to take some risky moves. It's going to take some patience. It's going to take all those things that uh, it takes to win the, the Great American Race. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. Jeff Gordon starts from the pole. Let's go back to 1997 and turn number two. The 24 makes its move. Jeff Gordon going for the front against Dale Earnhardt in the number three who brushes the wall. Dale Jarrett gets into the back of Earnhardt who ends up on his lid. And Jeff Gordon leads them to the flag in a 1-2-3 finish for Hendrick Motorsports. Two years later, Jeff Gordon makes a bold three wide move off turns three and four. Battling Rusty Wallace in the two. And comes around to hold off Mike Skidder in the 31 and Dale Earnhardt to the checkered flag.
2005. For the first time ever, the Daytona 500 goes into overtime. A late race caution puts Gordon out front for the green-white checker. He beats Kurt Busch, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Scott Riggs to the checkered flag as they race four wide behind him. Pacing the field for the Daytona 500 is the new 2015 Toyota Camry. 2014 Paralympic bronze medalist Amy Purdy is behind the wheel. Let's get our late breaking stories from Pitt Road, Jamie Little. Well, Mike, Matt Kenseth is a two time Daytona 500 winner, and already this week, he is a winner. He went to victory lane in the Sprint Unlimited and proved he's going to be a force today. But he is starting in the back, and his crew chief told me, usually Matt Kenseth likes to get to the front. He doesn't want to mess around hanging out in the back, but today is different. It's the Daytona 500. It's a very long race. They're going to be very patient and very smart as he moves his way to the front. Vince? Regan Smith is filling in for Kurt Busch today in the 41 car. Smith was in the garage early this morning getting a final seat fitting and also getting the comforts of the cockpit to his liking. Smith has not practiced this car in the pack draft, but he told me just before climbing in today, he feels no apprehension. Yes, the driver is different, but the team goal is the same. Win the Daytona 500. Chris? Vince, Jamie McMurray could be a sleeper today. He won this race back in 2010, but his best finish, other than that win, a 14th place. But just a couple weeks ago, he won the Rolex 24 at Daytona, putting his name next to A.J. Foyt and Mario Andretti as the only three drivers who have won all three events. Well, he's got momentum on his side, and momentum is important at Daytona. Matt? Chris, a busy 16 hours for Joe Gibbs Racing. When Matt Crafton arrived back in Daytona, they found a tailor that would open up. They hemmed. Kyle Busch's fire suit by about four inches. This morning he was fitted in the car. Same seat, same seat insert, but they had to add some padding and also adjust the pedals. And then the most important thing, they sat down with Matt and spotter Tony Hirschman III. Talked about communication, terminology. That way, they've never worked together, but that way they at least have that down. Now he will roll to the back, which Mike Joy really could be the safest bet of all and the smartest move for having a great day here in Daytona. Thanks, Matt. He'll be one of a dozen hanging out in the back. We'll get to those in a second. It is a gorgeous day in Daytona Beach. We've had evenings. We've been racing in the 40s. The tires were given off sparks, but it's the warmest day in a month here. 75 degrees to go 200 laps, 500 miles. Keep an eye on that fuel window. 40 to 46 laps on each tank of fuel. 12 cars go to the rear. 10 drivers are in backup cars, plus the two weekend driver changes, Matt Crafton and Regan Smith. Now they will fall to the rear in the order in which they would have started the race. So whoever was starting the highest up leads that group at the tail end of the pack. Yeah, Mike, that's close to a third of the field that's going to the rear. Well, one thing that jumped out at me was that track temp, 105 degrees. I haven't seen any track temps like that. Amy Wambach, Christine Rampone, and Kelly O'Hara from the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team are ready with the green flag. That's Kim Lopez in the helmet, the first female chief starter for a 500. And here we go. Right, all right. Green flags in the air. Buggity, buggity, buggity. Let's go racing, boys. lap that Jeff Gordon led in his Sprint Cup career came in this race 1993 he's led close to 25,000 of them will Gordon or Johnson lead lap one well it's nose to nose right here but I believe Gordon's got it I believe Jeff got it
You know, at the start of the race, I was watching Denny Hamlin in that 11 car. He was starting to try to make it three wide, and he had an old friend following from the Budweiser duel the other night, Danica Patrick, in that green number 10. Matt Kenseth, that yellow number 20, next to his teammate Hamlin. Hamlin and Patrick on the move on the outside. They've caught Ricky Stenhouse working their way up through the field from the back. Patrick up to 17th, Hamlin 14th as they come off turn four. Very comforting feeling to look in your mirror if you're Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, or Dale Earnhardt Jr. Those are teammates from the Hendrick Motorsports Group. Look pretty stout. Double wide, first 12 cars, then it's three abreast from there on back at 200 miles per hour. There, when I see Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car leading this race, when you get out there like that, we saw the same thing in the Budweiser Duel qualifying race. You have to watch both lines behind you. And you see the run that Carl Edwards in the 19 car there got on Jimmy, but uh, didn't have anywhere to go with it. Had to back off a little bit, and that bottlenecked everybody behind him, but uh, Johnson doing a nice job leading this thing. Matt Kenseth tops the list of biggest movers. After three days and nights of crashing and carnage, an orderly start to the 500. But in four of the last six 500s, the first caution flag has flown before lap 10. You know what's kind of ironic? You think about Carl Edwards working with Darian Grubb. Darian Grubb was Tony Stewart's crew chief when Tony beat Carl for the Sprint Cup championship, and here they are two years, three years later working together. Edwards in that orange number 19 has slotted into second behind Jimmy Johnson Chevy. Said he was a little nervous about this new deal <laughs> over there at the Joe Gibbs Toyota camp, but I think the way they've performed this week with finishing third in the unlimited, third in the duel, they've been fast. I think the tension has kind of dissipated a little bit. Darian's that way. Larry, he will calm you down. He's a real calm guy, doesn't get excited. I think that he and Carl make a really nice uh, combination. Add to that drama, Grubb was Jimmy Johnson's crew chief for one of his Daytona 500 wins. Five cars at the back of the pack, losing touch with that lead draft, perhaps by design. One of the things we hadn't heard all the 10 days we've been down here is cars, everybody's cars seem to be handling really, really well. The cool temps was making the track have a lot of grip. Today, I'm really anxious to see just how these tires are going to hold up and how these cars are going to handle in these hot conditions. Dale Earnhardt Jr., that blue car, moving to the outside for second place against Jeff Gordon. Well, th that 88 car, Dale Earnhardt Jr., has been the fastest car in single car runs ever since we got here. He's had a couple of three tenths in the bank. Wouldn't surprise me to see him go up there and take the lead. Every time we've interviewed him, he has been ecstatic about the way that 88 car has been handling and the speed that it's had. And another crew chief driver combination, Greg Ives comes over from the Xfinity Series with the Chase Elliott last year, and here he is with the Dale Earnhardt Jr. They've already won their qualifying race, and look like they got a pretty fast car today. The big difference today, though, is the temperature, not just the ambient temperature, but the temperature of the racing asphalt. There you see the difference from a week ago, Saturday night, until right now. Oh, it, it's it's huge, and that makes that's that's like change, you need to almost change your setup to, uh, for the condition to be as different as they are. And, and the biggest thing, it just does not have as much grip. When the track tip comes up, the tires don't grip as good. Yeah, and the tires get they get they build up more pressure because the heat of the track they build up more tire pressure that affects the handling of the car ambient temperature affects everything tape on the grill another thing that these guys haven't had to deal with hopefully they've all figured it out walk out in your driveway barefoot when it's 105 degrees <laughs> and see how much traction you there you get. go go to the mailbox <laughs> Joey Logano in that yellow Ford trying to break up the Hendrick trio at the front of the field. He has Tony Stewart in tow, the 14, Kevin Harvick, the four, and Matt Kenseth, the 20, on the inside lane. Darrell talked about Tony Stewart in that 14 car. I think he could be the sleeping giant. 48 career wins in Sprint Cup, never the great American race. Here comes Logano to the inside in his Ford. Matt Yoakum. Joey has put more into this event than any other. Working with his spotter, they've watched old restrictor plate races. Just thinking about what each were thinking at that moment as well as the communication. The second duel, he went up on top of the, of the stand to watch with his spotter, and they talked about it as well. He says right where they are now is one of the most difficult areas for the spotter to call. So Tab Boyd said, you have to be more in control at that point. Chris Neville. 
Well, Matt, the guys in the booth just talking about the track, the temperature today, and Carl Edwards already talking just eight laps into this race that that 19 car a little bit tight off turn four. He's saying, guys, if we're going to have a problem, that's where it's going to be today. And turn four is it, it, it's kind of problematic anyway because it's where the tunnel goes under the track down there. And as you come out of turn four, in the banking, the car feels good. But when it settles down onto the straightaway over that little bump there, it can really upset your car. We know how, how tense side-by-side -side traffic can be on the interstate at 60, 70 miles an hour. What's it like at 200? Well, the cars you see right here, the cars buff around. There is so much dirty air, turbulence pouring off these race cars. They will actually suck themselves into each other. I mean, you get up beside the guy's right, your right front fender up along his left rear quarter panel. We've seen it in practice. We saw it in the qualifying races. It can upset the car on the outside big time. Oh, Logano cuts up high as Gordon drops to the bottom, and Joey gets a slingshot draft off the 24. Comes up to second right behind Jimmy Johnson. I believe that Logano is going somewhere, buddy. But I'm pretty impressed with our pole sitter, Jeff Gordon, in that 24. He, he's being pretty aggressive in early going. He doesn't have a problem going from the top to the bottom. You know why, Larry? Because he doesn't want to get back in the eye of the storm. Stay up front. That's the safest place to be. Ten laps complete this time by. Jimmy Johnson has led eight of nine so far. It may look calm and orderly, but Dale Earnhardt Jr., third in line, just had a big slide down in turn number one, and that loss of momentum is going to cost him third place for the moment to the 22 of Logano. That's what I was going to say. That was a moment. <laughs> that was one of those moments, and you don't want to do that again. Forsey was in a position where he could catch it without making any contact with anybody else. Jimmy Johnson likes to lead this race. He has not been denied except for the first lap, which was led by Jeff Gordon. Casey Kane back in 14th. The other three, Hendrick Chevrolet is right up near the front. Mike, sometime around, I think Larry about, about for this, or somewhere around 20 laps. That's when the tires really start to, you, you find out who's got the best handling cars because the tires really start to give up a little bit and it all comes to handling. We got a great battle Whoa. for the lead. Three wide though, right behind them. Looks like it, uh, Jeff Gordon's going to take the lead in the 24 and bring the 22 of Logano with him. And Jimmy Johnson in that 48, he got shuffled to the outside. He's finally oh, going to oh. fall back in line. I think he might have touched the wall off of four there too. Maybe there's a little push problem with the car. Might have brushed it alongside Martin Truex with Tony Stewart on the bottom. Johnson caught three. Tell you, this is, uh, this is a 
15 to 20 laps, I, I always feel like that's when your car is going to go through that transition of being really good or going to junk. Oh, that's 12 cars under a blanket right behind the front five. That is a tight pack right there. No one able to surge ahead. Logano wants the lead. I believe Carl in the 19 Carl Edwards in the 19 car will get up there and maybe give Logano the push he needs. That inside line looks like they got the push right now. Dale Earnhardt Jr. gave Jeff Gordon a shove coming into the trioval. He was able to hold the lead. Now two laps ago when Jimmy Johnson got shuffled his 48 may have brushed the wall. Let's see. Yeah he's right up there in that place around the door, right where the tunnel is. It makes the car push a little bit. He scraped it. Didn't hurt it. Just scraped it a little bit. Yeah we've seen that happen to a number of drivers late exit of turn four where the banking goes all the way to flat. Larry the car feels good 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 heavy. You got a lot of input in the steering but when it flattens out then it's liable to jump into the wall like, like Jimmy's did. Jimmy Johnson's did. Denny Hamlin told me this morning, I like to lead. I'm going to get to the front just as soon as I can and uh, get the nose of his Camry in the wind. He started at the back. He's almost to the front. I just believe that uh, Jimmy Johnson way back here on the outside. I think the handle's gone away on that car, Larry. It looks like he's just falling back. Mike you talked about Denny Hamlin in that black number 11 but his teammate Matt Kenseth in that 20 started deep in the field as well and he's been working his way up through the middle. Sixteen laps complete Jeff Gordon back out front he and teammate Jimmy Johnson are the only two drivers to lead in the first 17 laps of the Daytona 500. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Sprint. Bring us your Verizon or AT&T bill and we'll cut your rate plan in half. Visit Sprint.com forward slash half price. And by Aflac. In just one day, we approve and pay. Introducing One Day Pay. 
We're under caution at lap 19. That yellow car is Landon Castle. The Iowa driver finished 12th in last year's 500. Something big lets go under the hood. He drops to the bottom, but with fluid on the racetrack, the caution flag waves. Really nice job of getting that thing down off the racetrack and uh, not causing a bigger mess. Now, Mike, pit road will be open. We're over a third of the way through a fuel run. I think you're going to see a lot of these drivers get four tires, but I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see a lot of them go with just two rights. Jeff Gordon leads them on to pit road. Jamie Little. And Jimmy Johnson already led 12 laps today. Not sure if he actually did touch the wall. He asked his spotter and they couldn't tell. They will change those right sides just in case so the handling could be a little bit better. Chris? Jamie Dale Jr. saying that the car is a bit tight. He tried running the tire fans, but said that 88 got snappy loose going into the corner. Looks like two tires on the 88. Matt? Joey Logano, Jeff Gordon, and Greg Biffle all complaining about the same issue. The car extremely tight, especially off turn four. Biffle opted for four tires to make a much more significant adjustment this early in the race to try to make some big gains. Pretty much a dead heat for the Advanced Auto Parts race off pit road. Jeff Gordon beating Joey Logano by a bumper. Landon Castle's car hauled to the garage. He'll be the first casualty of this Daytona 500. We're under caution. Time for the Aflac Speed Report. A look at who's getting around the two and a half mile tri oval the quickest. Keep in mind the lead car, not necessarily the fastest due to the draft. Michael McDowell's Ford has the fastest speed of this race so far. 
Aflac's one day pay because they know speed matters. Cole Witt penalized for too many men over the wall on that first pit stop of the day. Now, Michael Annette, Casey Mears, Bobby Labonte stayed out when everyone else pitted. Annette is credited with leading a lap of the 500, as is J.J. Yaley, and now Casey Mears. Eric Stone Street's been a fan. He's been around all weekend, enjoying the Fox Bash at the beach, and here for the 500 up on the pit box of Kevin Harvick. 22 laps complete. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Budweiser. Budweiser still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. 42 cars on the lead lap. Sam Hornish at the back. He had a long stop fixing his helmet air conditioning. Everyone is pitted. Jeff Gordon, Joey Logano on the front row. Gordon gets lane choice, picks the inside. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Martin Truex, Carl Edwards, Casey Mears, Jimmy Johnson, Tony Stewart, Bobby Labonte, Jamie McMurray, the top 10. We are back under green. Darrell, when they get to the back stretch, there'll be a lot of speedy dry blowing up there. Yeah, effect it, on the drivers. Well, it, it, it sticks to your windshield. And if you're back in the pack, it just gets that much worse. And you need to see as clearly as you can right now when you're all packed up like this. So it will have some effect. There you see it spraying up on the cars back in the field there. And it does stick to those Lexan windshields. A lot of it. It's like running through a dust storm. Turn four, still a lot of three wide. That green car on the bottom, Danica Patrick, three abreast, talking about the wind up in turn four. 
I said that I'm sure turn four being tight is definitely some of the wind, but it doesn't change that it's still an issue. Yeah, the wind affects these cars. I mean, the big flat sides on these cars, one of the things that makes them handle good in the corner, also those big gusts of wind, those puff of winds will move the car around. But I will say before that caution, and we had already run 18 laps, a lot of drivers were complaining about their cars being tight. They were turning the steering wheel, but the front tires were not responding. And that's usually the way it goes because you know it's going to be a little hotter and a little slicker, so you tighten the car up. You can back that out as the race goes on. Logano and Edwards side by side as they come off turn number four behind Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt Jr. That's Edwards in orange, Logano in yellow. Boy, Larry, right now I'm just seeing it's going to be hard to shake one of those Henry cars out of the lead. I mean, it's Jimmy Johnson, Dale Jr., Jeff Gordon. One of them's up there holding the lead pretty good. Tony Stewart second on the inside line trying to move up. Matt. Mike, the only thing missing from his career is a Daytona 500 win. Now, effort equals results. Now, remember back in the duel, Stewart's 14 sustained significant body damage. His crew chief, Chad Johnson, actually did much of the repair work. In fact, they had so much body work stuff going on, he had to change his uniform twice due to so much Bondo dust. But the car was fast. They did not want to go to a backup, and they're showing why now. Had they gone to a backup car, they would have had to start this race in the rear. Stewart wants to be out front. But when you got a car you like, if there's any way to keep it in the race, you keep it in the race. A driver that's confident, confident his car, crew, the whole package, that's what you want. Jeff Gordon out front trying to become the first driver since Bobby Allison in 1988 to win the Daytona 500 in their final start in the great race. Larry, of course, back in the day when there wasn't so many templates, if something happened to the car in the race, we could fix them a lot better here at the track. A lot better. Hey, man, give me a break. I've been in the wall. Come on. Let's check in on Regan Smith, former rookie of the year, named this weekend to replace Kurt Busch in the number 41 for Gene Haas and that Chevrolet team. Vince Welch has more. Not a regular Sprint Cup Series driver right now, but he does have a lot of experience. 172 Cup starts. He's won in this series before back at Darlington. To start the race, they wanted the car to be a little bit snug because of the securement and the fact that he has not had much practice, none in the draft. But he said it was just way too tight, so they made air pressure and chassis adjustments to free him up, particularly in turn four. He had a strong run in yesterday's Xfinity Series race as he leads the 55 of Michael Waltrip. Yeah, and back to Regan Smith, his wife Megan is back in the Mooresville, North Carolina area, due with their first child any day now. Well, y'all do remember he was upside down yesterday. Yes, he was. He did like a 360. Said that's the first time he'd ever been upside down in a race car. He said he had a strong run. It didn't say he had a great finish. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt Jr. running second behind teammate Jeff Gordon. Let's look at the nationwide Dale Jr. performance report for the first 30 laps of this 500. You're watching Dale Jr. here, and you see how you look behind you probably is 75% of the time. You, can, you, you kind of have a sense about what's in front of you and where the people are in front of you, but you're constantly looking at who's making a run on you, where they are, and that's why you see him looking back a lot. Another thing, Dale Jr. is left-handed, and he uses that left hand to really drive the car. You watch him. He'll take that right hand and just slip it up on top of that wheel when he gets down to the corner. He really does most of his steering with his left hand. Two-time defending Daytona 500 champion. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in second behind Jeff Gordon and ahead of Carl Edwards. Edwards with a brand new team this year. He left Ford and Roush Fenway Racing to move over to Joe Gibbs and the Toyota camp, joining former teammate Matt Kenseth, Denny Hamlin, and Kyle Busch. Yep, he was Joe, uh, Coach Gibbs' number one draft choice for this year. Yeah, Carl Edwards has 23 Sprint Cup Series wins, an Xfinity Series win, but he has never won a Sprint Cup Series restrictor plate race. 
Kyle Busch watching from a Daytona hospital after a crash in yesterday's race. His substitute driver, Truck Series champion Matt Crafton. Let's get an update on the 18. Matt Yoko. Mike, an update for Kyle about his car with Crafton behind the wheel. Everything going according to plan. Now, they waited and pitted the second time by, not with all the leaders, because they just wanted to have a nice, easy entry on the pit road. Because remember, Kyle had issues in the duel with his tack. They also wanted Matt to be able to get his bearings of where they were pitting and uh, everything going according to plan. He says the car is just a tick on the snug side, but all's well. Matt Crafton was a groomsman in Kyle and Samantha Bush's wedding. There they are earlier today uh, at the hospital expecting their first child in May. But think about Matt Crafton. He has a ton of racing experience. He's won the last two championships in the NASCAR Camper Road Truck Series. The biggest race of the year. Daryl, I was thinking about it this morning. What if the night before the Super Bowl is a backup quarterback? You said our starting quarterback can't go. I know you've never started a game, <laughs> but you're our guy tomorrow. Put me in, coach. Yeah. But hello to Kyle and Samantha. I know you're watching. They're expecting in May. There's a baby boom these last four or five years in NASCAR. Drivers and kids. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of NASCAR. Coca-Cola, open happiness. Jeff Gordon has been out front for 22 of 37 laps. In this Daytona 500 sprint, we'll cut your rate plan in half. Bring your Verizon or AT&T bill to Sprint. Turn in your old phone. They will cut your rate plan in half at a Sprint retail store or on Sprint.com slash half price. Closing in on 25,000 career laps led. Sixth on the all-time list. 
But you know, Chris Myers talked about it in the pre-race show, 762 starts in Sprint Cup, all consecutive starts. One thing, Larry, you, and we got audio from 80. Let's see what uh, Dale Jr. says. Until Jeff is able to string the field, we'll be running on the bottom instead of the top. I, one of the things I was going to say is you, you, these guys right now, they are giving a lot of feedback to the crew chief. They got that first pit stop in. The cars were a, lot, a little tight. They adjusted on them. You got to keep feeding information to the crew chiefs. Cars doing this. Cars doing that. You got to break the corners down. Good in, middle, center, off. And, and that's the information that will help you get down near the end of this race, have a good race car. Let's go to Earnhardt's pit. Chris Neville. Mike, obviously, Dale saying, let's run the bottom of the racetrack now. That was uh, just one comment he had to TJ Majors. He's told him a couple different times to try and tell Jeff's crew, let's run the 24 and the 88 at the bottom. And Dale also saying, since that last pit stop, the car not as tight as it was. So the adjustment there's making is working on the 88. And that, that's, that's what you do. You start the race with the car a little tight. You don't want to be up in the middle of this field with a car that's loosey-goosey and about to spin out. So you start them a little tight, then you back that out as the race wears on. Yeah, and Chris Neville mentioned T.J. Majors. That's the spotter for Dale Earnhardt. All of these drivers have a spotter that's up on top of the main grandstands. That's another pair of eyes for these drivers. 23 drivers in this lead pack. One of them. It's Brad Keselowski in 19th place. He's made a nice rebound, Matt, after a long pit stop. Mike, the reason why the long pit stop, Brad was complaining about the car being extremely loose, just slipping and sliding all over the racetrack. So crew chief Paul Wolf decided to fix the car now under caution. They can make much bigger changes. They pushed in a spring rubber as well as a chassis adjustment, just trying to tighten up that too. From 33rd up into the top 20 oh. since the restart. Stewart in the wall. And now Matt Kenseth got bounced into the wall. Everybody scatters. Yellow flag. Stewart has a lot of damage and so does the 20 car. A lot of damage on the right front of uh, the 14 car. Tony Stewart you can see there. Two of the big favorites to win the Daytona 500. The Chevy of Tony Stewart. The Toyota of Matt Kenseth come to grief here between turn four and the trioval at lap 41. And Kansas is a little less uh, maybe a little more cosmetic. You can see some smoke off the right front but uh, Tony's has got some uh, chassis or suspension damage. See how this started Daryl. And we're Stewart's down here on the bottom behind the 22 car Joy Logano coming up coming up. Mm, look like that that thing that we've seen. Oh gosh he got right over into the 21 car. One of the things we've seen is when a car gets to the left corner of your car, it loosens you up so badly. That's what it looked like. Hamlin got that nose up there, shot him up the track. Now Stewart was sixth down here at the bottom of the racetrack. Yeah, you see Hamlin behind him in the 11. Now watch when Hamlin gets right to that left rear quarter panel. It just, it, it turns your car, it makes your car get loose. And Tony tried to correct. Ryan Blaney was there. Michael ran into Back of the 20, Michael and Michael walked into 55, ran in the back of the 20 of Matt Kenseth. Just a bottleneck chain reaction. The damage on that red and white 21 of Ryan Blaney's as well. Look at Jamie McMurray in that black number one. He's going to slide through there. Couple of hits there for Kenseth, three and all, and he's down on the apron. I, I think Matt's car might be okay. I think they can repair it. I'm not sure about Tony's. Michael Waltrip, the 55, getting in the back of Matt Kenseth. Oh, wow, he missed Regan Smith. Okay, Just two minutes. Barely. Want to ride with Matt Kenseth? Well, I don't. Bit here. Here's <laughs> I don't ride with you. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> Tony Stewart, like Dale Earnhardt a couple of decades before him, has tried everything to win the Daytona 500. Now, that car's not out of it. It'll be damaged. It may have some repair on it, but it can still draft and still run. Here's what Brad Keselowski had to say about this one. Copy. You get in the back up there a little bit. I just it didn't even feel like it was that hard. I just bumped him, but it popped the fender. I don't think it's anything big. 
said he popped the fender. Look, when you hit the nose of the car, it'll bow the fender. It'll bow the uh, hood and the fenders up a little bit. It looks okay, but we'll have to take a closer look when he's in the pit. Pit road is open under the second caution, Jamie. And Jimmy Johnson earlier saying his car was a little bit tight, not turning as well as he'd like, but they said that is gone. The car is better. They'll put on right sides and make a chassis adjustment. Chris? Dale Earnhardt Jr. took two tires on the last stop, said the car is getting better right in front of us, the 19 Carl Edwards. Pretty heated debate on that car, whether to take two tires or four. They take four. Matt? Jeff Gordon in, same issue as last time. The car tight, but it is consistent. Right side tires again for the 24. Jeff Gordon wins the race off pit road from Joey Logano, who picks up three spots there. And we're under caution for the second time today in the Daytona 500 on Fox. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Game of War. Play free now. The City Double Cash card, the only card that pays you back twice. Five drivers in the field have won the Great American Race twice, including Jeff Gordon three times. Here's where they are running today. We will restart with Matt Kenseth and Tony Stewart under repair on pit road. Landon Castle in the garage area, blown engine. Everyone else on the lead lap as we go back to green. Jeff Gordon and Joey Logano on point. Matt Kenseth sets on pit road. They work on the car there. I think they decided to take their licks. Let's get it fixed before we go back out. Stewart had steering damage in the right front they're trying to repair. We're almost a quarter way through this race, and Joey Logano in the 22, Gordon in the 24, Earnhardt in the 88, Johnson in the 48. They still have not changed left side tires. Heck, I, you know, you think back to the uh, Sprint Unlimited, 
Dale Jr. is going to run 75 laps on the same set of tires. So uh, apparently the hotter track conditions are not affecting the tires as much as we thought it might. Matt Kenseth back in the race as Joey Logano tries to become the sixth driver to lead this Daytona 500 and does at the start finish line. Let's check with Jamie. Matt Kenseth pitted three times to fix that right front damage. The clearance wasn't good enough. There was a tire rub, so they actually had to replace part of that right front fender. And he's going to stay out now. Right now, it seems like the suspension is OK on the 20 car. Yeah, I think that was wise. Go ahead and get it fixed. Lose a couple laps, whatever you got to do, and then try to get a lucky dog or two and get back in this thing. The field will lap him by once again. Joey Logano's Ford is out front of the 500. Let's give you an NASCAR on Fox. Rank it up. Tip of the Fox cap to uh, audio engineer emeritus Freddie Aldis, who's brought us such great sounds of Speed Week these many years, working his final 500. Joey Logano out front, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Denny Hamlin all in a position to strike at the head of this draft. Seems to be a theme here. If you can get out front like Joey is, we saw it with Jeff Gordon, we saw it with Jimmy Johnson, seems like you can hold everybody at bay. Tony Stewart has not returned to the track. In fact, he's headed back for the garage. Matt? Mike, heartbreak for Stewart. Now, they had two different groups working on the 14. One was working on the cosmetic damage. Another group was working on the suspension area in that right front. They have come to the conclusion that the spindle in the right front is severely bent. They're taking it back to the garage. They're going to take their time and replace it. His chances for a 500 win will have to wait till next year. Three times Stewart has finished 41st or worst in this race. Yeah, if you look at the four restrictor plate races, last year his best finish was 34th. Yeah, he made heavy contact with that outside wall. I'm surprised that uh, they didn't take it to the garage soon. 40 cars on the lead lap. Matt Kenseth two laps down. Stewart going to the garage. Landon Castle out of the race. You look at Joey Logano in his 22 car leading this race. A couple of years ago, after spending about four years at Joe Gibbs Racing, he had no idea where his career was going to go. This is his third year with Team Penske over there. Won five races last year. This is his seventh year in Sprint Cup, and he's only 24 years old. Yep. Young man. Got a great future ahead of him. Joey Logano started racing quarter midgets in his native Connecticut. At about age five, he says, someday I'm going to kick Jeff Gordon's butt. Well, Jeff Gordon <laughs> is just outside to his right rear. And when reminded of that quote he gave to the Hartford Current, Logano says, you know what? I hope there's some little kid in a car somewhere wants to come up here and kick my butt now. There's your Toyota top performers, Denny Hamlin, who started in the back right up to the front in his number 11. Got a little company here right now.
boy, Joey Logano just slid right in behind Jeff yep. Gordon in that 24 in front of Dale Earnhardt in the 88. Uh, I think Dale Earnhardt Jr. let him in. Larry. Little give and yeah, take little there. Give and take right now. No need to be too aggressive at this point. Another of the cars damaged in that lap 41 crash was Ryan Blaney. Chris Neville has an update. And Mike, this being his first Daytona 500, spent quite a while on pit lane. A bit of damage to the left side of that car. Checked with the team, and one of the problems, the suspension damage. That steering wheel no longer straight. It looks like the toe took a pretty good hit. You know, when the, I'll never forget this, Larry. We were down here, and Earnhardt, he used to come running up beside you and stick that nose right in your door. I mean, right in the driver's door. Came in the pits one I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm side drafting. I said, what do you mean? I, I never heard of side drafting. I said, what are you talking about? Look at Jeff Gordon. He goes down on the door of the 22 of Joey Logano, gets the push. He slows Logano down, shoots himself forward right into the lead, and that's side drafting. And I think that's the biggest thing. It's not that it picks you that much speed up. It slows that car you're side drafting off of down. Yeah, you know, we always thought you had to get behind somebody to draft, and then Earnhardt said, oh, no, you, you side draft. It's like a, you hit a spring almost. Oh, yeah, you just go down, pushes you right forward. Jeff Gordon holding the field at bay. Now two Fords have hooked up on the outside. Joey Logano has help from Roush Fenway Racing's Greg Biffle in the 16. And they get right to the back bumper of Earnhardt. You know, Greg Biffle in that 16, he has been pretty racy down here this entire speed weeks. Greg went winless last year, but he has finished in the top 10 in the last three Daytona 500s. Got his first career win here in a July race. Yeah, Ricky Stenhouse back in 12th as a teammate. They, they, they are very optimistic, uh, the Roush Fenway group is, that they have really made some improvements in their cars, not just for here, but for everywhere in the future. And Biffle has been the best of the Fords here in Speed Week. Chevy 1-2, Ford, third and fourth. Two Toyotas in the top 10, Denny Hamlin in seventh, Carl Edwards in 10th. Riding with Kevin Harvick. Alongside Ricky Stenhouse. Last time off turn four, Joey Logano, Dale Earnhardt Jr. comes down to block and last time by, they had a pretty close call up in turn four. <laughs> they had a pretty close call right there too. Dale Jr. does not want Joey Logano to get in front of him. Let's see what happens here. Touch. Again, it's, it's that right front of the car on the inside up against the left rear of the car on the outside, and it makes that car on the outside it, it wiggle or at least get loose. Jimmy Johnson led 12 laps early in this race, but Jamie, he's been shuffled back to 18th. And that wasn't by plan, no doubt. I talked to his crew chief, Chad Knauss, and he said, we want to stay up front all day. It's definitely an advantage to stay up there. What's happened to Jimmy is he's just gotten too tight off of turn four. His car doesn't want to turn as well as it should, even though that's what they've been adjusting for. So definitely going to take a bigger swing on it the next round of pit stops. He restarted fourth. He's dropped to 18th. Jeff Gordon in his final Daytona 500 appearance trying to win it for the fourth time. He's led four times for 36 laps so far. Stay tuned to see what happens next on Fox NASCAR.
The Daytona 500 Hot Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Cialis. 61 complete. Jeff Gordon still leading. Coca-Cola is the official soft drink of NASCAR. Here's how the Coca-Cola racing family is performing today. Joey Logano tops that list. Tony Stewart in the garage under repair. Joining Landon Castle. <laughs> Matt Kenseth two laps down. The rest of the field on the lead lap. Gordon and Dale Earnhardt Jr. continue to pull them around this speedway. Larry, at this point in the race, I'm not real worried about where I'm running. As long as I got the lead draft, uh, as long as I hang on to the back of this lead draft, uh, a lot of things are going to happen before this race is over with. Some guys are intentionally running back there, I believe. Uh, but we've had a very little action. We've had a lot of action at the front, but I think what's going on mid-pack on back is just guys hanging on. Well, let's get an update on some of the cars that are not up in that front pack, beginning with Matt Yoakum. And Kevin Harvick chasing his second Daytona 500 win. Harvick's car, much like the field, tight, especially on exit of turn four. No adjustments on the first stop. Right now, he's just quietly riding along in 13th, Vince. Well, Kyle Larson has been hanging around toward the back as well in that area around 25th. The car started out tight. It's gotten edgy, so they've made some adjustments to it. But Larson happy with the car and happy with where he is currently. Jamie? Clint Boyer back in 30th right now in a backup car. It's been a tough week for Clint. He told me this backup car just doesn't have the downforce numbers. It's a little bit loose. The rear tires just aren't in the racetrack like he wants it to be. That has been the case today, and that's why he's running toward the back. And another thing that I noticed, I think Larry, you'll notice too, look at the American flag here in front of us and all the flags. Actually, Danica mentioned the wind off turn four, and there's a really strong wind blowing right up off of turn four where we've seen a number of guys get into the wall. So I think that wind is having some, playing a little havoc with some of these cars. Well, look how the complexion of this race has changed as they come by the start finish line. The first seven cars are single file, completing lap 64. That's that's pretty orderly. Yeah, but I think based on that report that we got off those different drivers, I think that's drivers, maybe their cars are just a little bit off, but we still know we have a minimum of about three or four more pit stops. Let's see where let's take a look at our we have we have our wind direction here, and you can see that the wind is strongly blowing across the back straightaway toward turn four, and that affects these cars. Not dramatically, but it does affect them, particularly if you're already a little loose. Oh, look at that three wide knot of cars. Three by three right there. A little dodgy, a little dicey right there as we come around a complete lap 65. Ty Dillon driving his first Daytona 500. He's right now as high up as he's been all day. Sixth place. But is everything okay for the rookie? Might be blowing up here. I don't, I don't know. This thing don't feel right. A lot of times you remember we were in practice and you were talking about that note that the engine was singing. It was a perfectly tuned sound. The driver immediately if the engine changes the sound just a little bit that's his first indication that something might be going wrong. But I will tell you this the wind can buff the car around and make the engine feel like it's not running right. There's that beautiful one note symphony from David Reagan's engine. That's a great big old windbag right there. <laughs> I mean essentially the driver lays the throttle all the way down and unless he has to he never lifts it around this two and a half mile racetrack. What did you call him the other day we were talking about it? A, a well a, an eight cylinder engine is just one giant 16 valve wind instrument. Exactly. As long as it's running good. You know, back to that wind direction, if you'll remember yesterday in final practice, Jeff Gordon asked his spotter, Eddie DeHunt, had the wind change directions during that practice, and that's exactly the way it was blowing at the tail end of that final practice yes, yesterday. Sir. Well, that corner's a little dicey anyway. I, I mentioned about coming out of turn four and hitting that little dip where the tunnel is. You throw a little wind in there, you're a little bit loose, you get somebody up alongside of you. You got your hands full, baby. Hang on.
The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Ford F-150. Introducing the all-new Ford F-150, the future of tough. Jeff Gordon still leading at 70 laps. Here's today's Ford track facts. Tiny Lund, the first to win the Daytona 500 in a Ford, 1963. And the last time this race was won from the pole position, Dale Jarrett's Ford in 2000. Ford, go further. 71 complete. Jeff Gordon has led 50 of those laps. He's led four different times. In this, his final Daytona 500, the most he's ever led in a 500 was 61 in 1995. Yeah, they're going by Matt Kenseth there for to put him another lap down. Matt, Matt came out of the pit late and was about a half lap down when this run started. So he goes another lap down. I don't think that car is anywhere near like he needs it to be. You see him there. He almost smacked the fence coming off turn four. Car just not handling right. He was involved in the second caution flag of the day when Tony Stewart got into the wall, into Ryan Blaney tipped into Kenseth by Michael Walter and, I, and and Matt was one of my favorites. I mean, I thought he had a car that well, he did have a car that could have won this race, but uh, certainly he's not going to have a chance with the car the way it is now. Mike Darrell, we've talked so much about the Hendrick Chevrolet drivers of Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr. But how about Casey Kane in that five car, the fourth Hendrick Chevrolet driver? He's up there inside the top five. Yeah, new crew chief Keith Rodden comes over from the one car of Jamie McMurray back home. Keith was uh, there with Hendrick Motorsports for a long time, doing a great job. So four Chevys and Logano's yellow and red Ford are your top five. A lot of calculating going on right now, Larry. You know who I think's really doing some calculating right now? Our champion, Kevin Harvick. He's just kind of been sitting back there in that four car, just inside, just outside the top ten, doing what he normally does at this restrictor plate races. He, he's sizing everything and everybody up. I, I forget what, what was it, 07, I think it was. On the last lap, he was running fifth. Came off a of turn four and won that, beat Mark Martin back to the back to the line. So long as Harvick's anywhere near the front, don't count him out. 21 cars in the lead draft, 40 cars on the lead lap. Let's go for a nationwide inside ride with Dale Jr.'s number 88 in second place. He is 78 looking. You're still clear. There you go. Going to go to the high side to block the five. Five's going to look to the inside, and five's in line with him. There's single file in your mirror. Here comes the 78 again. He lifted. He's in line. They're side by side behind him. 19 went to the bottom. 78 is still clear. 78 is going to go to the bottom of the block. He did. 78 went to the bottom of the block to 19. Five's working the quarter panel of that 19 behind the 78. 78 is still clear. 19, just cleared to five in your mirror there. 19 cleared to five. 78, 19, both clear in your mirror. You think we talk a lot? That's T.J. Major, Majors, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s spotter. You might think that's TMI, but it isn't. That's what you have to be able to do as a spotter. You have to talk that driver around the car. When cars are anywhere near you, that driver's got to know exactly where they are so he knows what kind of moves he can make. Yeah, at a race like this, Dale Earnhardt Jr. or his crew chief, Greg Ives, talks very little. You leave that radio open for T.J. Majors, the spotter there you see on the left. That question I just raised, so did Jeff Gordon spotter, former modified driver, Eddie DeHunt. I don't mean to be talking so much, but I think for this vernacular, we gotta. Oh, we gotta get ready for you know, when you're really gonna be needing to talk. That's exactly what I'm thinking, so we might as well do it all day. Hey, gotta work on the vernacular, baby. <laughs> but, yeah. Going to have to work on Martin Truex, that number 78. Racing for Barney Visser's single car team based way outside this sport's southern roots in Denver, Colorado. Truex had a great run in the Sprint Unlimited Saturday night, led 30 laps, and that's 29 more than he led all last year. Here he comes to the front. 
Yeah, and, and it's been such a trying year for Martin Trex Jr. He made the move over there, and he only had one top five finish. And then on a personal side, his longtime girlfriend, Sherry Pollux, has been fighting cancer, and we continue to, to think about Sherry and pray for her as well. Another driver crew chief that uh, could be a potent pair. 77 laps complete. Jeff Gordon and teammate Dale Earnhardt Jr. continue to lead. Eighty-one laps, Jeff Gordon continues to lead a star-studded Daytona 500 on both sides of pit wall. Abby Wambach waved the green flag along with her teammates. The Women's World Cup is coming to Fox in 100 days. No change in the front five. Gordon, Earnhardt, Edwards, Hamlin, and Kane. You know, we're about four to eight laps away from what will probably be our first set of green flag pit stops. Two issues that can rear its head here. One, going from 200 miles per hour to 55 miles per hour, the pit road speed. And remember Andy Petrie before the green flag talking about the pit road technology, the way pit road is being officiated out of the pit road officiating trailer. It could absolutely, I think we could see some penalties here. How about our leader's strategy, Matt? Mike, his spotter, Eddie DeHunt, told him three laps ago, the winds have really picked up, especially down in the turn four area. Now, I've seen a number of crew members up and down pit road in my area jumping up on the box just to confer about what lap everyone thinks they would like to pit. Right now, it appears to be around 86, maybe 87. Chris? Well, just a couple laps ago, Carl Edwards pulled off the bottom to try and work with Denny Hamlin. He told me before the race, if they were going to be able to take it to the Hendrick cars, he was going to have to do it with a teammate. Those two have been hooking up, and you can see right now in the back of the 24 and the 88. 
Another car right at the back of this little group right here is the two car Brad Kessler. Remember we was on the pit road for a second stop under the caution to work on the car to make some changes. Those changes are really paying off. That car has been coming up to the front and there he runs right at the back of this lead pack. Kozlowski in eighth. First car to pit is Michael Waltrip who has crash damage uh, from back at lap 41. But most importantly Larry. Don't you want to pit with people who are running near where you are running so you don't lose time and track position getting back up to speed. And there'll be a lot of communication on pit road to make sure they're on the same agenda as you are changing either just two tires or four tires. Yeah you see how they run the quickest hooked up together on the racetrack. You want to make sure you have friends to leave pit road with where you can get back up to speed and, and maintain. Let me tell you the most important thing the driver has to do two things really get the hand up start waving to the people behind you that you're going to pit and tell the spotters everybody got to know that you're on the same page and then do not slide the tires coming on pit road if you do then you're going to have to change all four of them most likely and i'd say we'll probably see some teammate coordination here. You'll see all the Hendrick Chevrolet drivers pit together. Maybe all the Joe Gibbs Toyota drivers. And, and I guess quite honestly, Larry, it probably you probably see some four tire changes because you're going to have to put all that fuel in it. Remember Gordon Earnhardt Johnson. They still have not changed left side tires. Yeah, so you're going to have to be sitting still quite a while. You might as well throw four tires on it. But look at those first eight cars back to Keselowski's white Ford. They have the luxury of one to two seconds on the rest of the field. Well, you just, I mean, time and time again. He's coming to pit with the 46. Pit, pit, pit. Coming in, too. Here comes a whole cluster off turn four now. Justin Allgaier, Michael Annette, and J.J. Yaley, and a big group behind them. You just have to, it, inevitably, there's a, there's a mess up, a foul up on trying to get on pit road, and somebody runs in the back of somebody. I've seen it a million times. Just got to really let the people, the spotters, and everybody know what you're doing. Gailey taking left side tires. Everyone else in this group at least taking right sides. Well, you need to take at least two. They're, they're almost free because of how long it takes to dump the Sunoco race fuel in there to fill it up. Here comes 87 two. complete this time. Here come most of the leaders. Carl Edwards does not stop, nor does his teammate Denny Hamlin. Otherwise, pit road's a busy place. Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr. lead them oh, in. Oh. And Truex is very slow in the pit lane. He can't get out of the way there. Matt. Jamie. Jimmy Johnson in the 48. Remember, he had been tight. They're going to take four tires for the first time. Chris? Dale Jr. only taking right side tires. Those two stops going to take four tires on this stop. Still too tight underneath the 24. Matt Mess pit stall on pit road goes to Gordon who won the pole. Stall number one. Chassis adjustment already completed. The car was tight when it was getting better over the run. Four tires. He's away. Martin Truex completed his stop without further incident, but he was unable to get to the inside to turn into his pit box. Yeah, he couldn't get he couldn't turn and he almost got into the two of Brad Keselowski trying to turn into his box. I'm not sure Carl Edwards has got road down Earl there. Locked up. Edwards locked the brake coming onto pit road. Denny Hamlin with him. Clint Boyer comes in. Jamie? Clint Boyer, remember, he just doesn't have enough downforce. He's been running in the back. The car is just a little too loose. They're going to adjust it here to help him out. Let's go back to Chris. Jamie, it was four tires on the last stop, four tires on this stop. Carl Edwards still saying the car too tight. Matt? Denny Hamlin, who nearly won this race a year ago. Left side tires going on. His car still on the tight side. He's away. And the 18. in. Four. Solid effort today filling in for Kyle Busch. Oh, he stalls it. They're pushing him away. Finally, he fires and he's gone. Jimmy Johnson met over the wall too soon. Taking a drive through penalty with his number 48 Chevrolet. Vince. The 42 of Kyle Larson is on pit lane. That's his backup car. They've been hanging around toward the back cars. A little bit tight off of four. The uh, entry not too bad. A four tire change in fuel for Kyle Larson. Pit road speed is measured electronically. And several drivers got gigged for speeding entering or leaving. Pit road. Five drivers caught for speeding. On pit road. Remember Bobby Labonte, Carl Edwards, Martin Truex among them. Remember, Carl Edwards had brake issues in the qualifying race. He had brake issues then. He couldn't get the car slowed down coming on pit road. 
So here are the penalties being served. Kyle Larson too fast exiting. Now watch the 78 of Truex left of your screen. Hey, if you're going to speed, you might as well go big. He was trying to get down, so his time across the next section would not result in a penalty. But in was... section one, that's where the trouble was. Now he has trouble getting to his pit box. Yeah, a little kiss right there. You can see the damage on that right front fender of, a, of the two car. Clear eye, clear eye, clear eye, clear eye. Two red, two red, one seventy eight, one seventy eight. Whoa. Come on. I think the majority of that was a product, really, of too many drivers trying to pit at the same time. I know we talked about you wanted friends, but that was that was two thirds of the field on pit road at one time. Especially when two of them are coming to pit road too fast. We stay under green, 90 laps complete. Jeff Gordon, once again, your leader. Ninety four laps complete five Chevrolets out front Jeff Gordon Casey Kane Earnhardt Dillon and Menard are the front five at ninety four laps Jimmy Johnson not among the leaders he got caught with a penalty because his pit crew was over the wall too soon here is the video evidence from the pit road officiating system. The crew out there early now Johnson has the first pit stall which if you're just visualizing it might make it difficult to determine whether or not they were over the wall too soon. Let's go to our Fox NASCAR rules expert former crew chief Andy Petrie. Yeah Mike you could see that the crew members feet were on the ground before Jimmy Johnson's car was basically the, in effect one pit stall away. Now that's the rule they cannot put a foot on pit road until that car uh, is within one pit stall of their own pit stall. Now, the fact that he does have that first one, 
they have to put a hash mark. You can see the yellow mark on the ground. The, the crew members see that. They know that they can't put a foot on the ground until their car passes that hash mark. Jimmy Johnson got tagged for going over too soon. So the evidence is seen electronically by cameras up on the roof, sent to an official who relays it to the tower. Thanks, Andy. I think a lot of times, a lot of teams have used that first pit box in because it had some advantages, but those advantages have been taken away with this new system. So after pit stops, the field is pretty much split in two. There's a 13 car lead draft headed by Jeff Gordon's number 24, all the way back through Greg Biffle's Ford, the number 16. Then, eight seconds behind that group, Michael Annette leads the second pack of more than a dozen cars. Today's aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. Can you imagine making a tire that you can run at 200 miles an hour into a 33 degree bank and you and, they, and they're not wearing out. You're just changing them because you want to and you get some better grip. But to, just to just to be able to do that, the engineering that it takes to do that, it's amazing. Jeff Gordon's RPM hardly wavers. 86, 8700 RPM. From that's V8. A, that's a good handling race car. What, it, what crew chiefs ask the driver all the time, how much RPM are we losing in a turn? You can see Jeff Gordon's losing very little. Closing in on 250 miles. We'll be back with our Fox mid-race report. Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. 
Time now for the NASCAR on Fox Daytona 500 mid-race report. Jeff Gordon in his 23rd and final Daytona 500 started on the pole. He's led the most laps so far, topping speeds of 200 miles per hour. And despite three previous wins in this, the great American race, he has never led the most laps in this race. Darrell Waltrip, who are you keeping an eye on? I'm keeping an eye on that 88 car. He won this race last year. He won his qualifying race last week. He's had the fastest car in practice all week long. Keep an eye on Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that number 88 car, Matt. DW, I'm focused on his teammate, the five of Casey Kane, rejoined with a longtime engineer, Keith Rodden. Now, the car has been inconsistent today, but the biggest goal was to find himself to the front. He's there with his teammate, a great drafting partner in the 24. Matt, we talked at the top of the show, drivers that's not made a lot of noise yet in speed weeks. I look at Ty Dillon in that 33 car, running inside the top five. Jamie, could he be the surprise of this Daytona 500? He definitely could be the surprise. I talked to Paul Menard before he got in the car, and he said he's going to go hard the first half of this race and see how that car is handling. He's working with the new crew chief, and he's gone from mid-pack, and he's working his way to the front. Seven drivers have led this Daytona 500, but you haven't seen the winner on point yet. In six of the last seven 500s, the eventual winner had not led before halfway. Keep an eye on the closer, Sprint Cup champion Kevin Harvick. Chris? And Mike Denny Hamlin, who started 24th back of the pack, moved up into the top five, currently sixth. Remember, Hamlin was second in this race last year. He's trying to get his and Toyota's first win in the Daytona 500. And worth reiterating, in the last 22 Daytona 500s, the leader at the halfway point did not win this race. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. Lap 107, caution is out. Third one of the day. Debris just before the start finish line in the tri oval. Pit road is open. Jamie. Well, earlier in the race, Ty Dillon thought he was blowing up. It turned out it could have just been a handling issue. This is his first Daytona 500, learning as he goes. Right side tires, Ty Dillon's car is good, Chris. Junior asked his new crew chief, Greg Ives, how the tires look after that last pit stop. Greg Ives telling him they looked great. Two tires on the stop, still trying to free up the 88. Problems exiting. Matt. Jeff Gordon still on the tight side. Track bar adjustment already completed. Two tires and easily he'll win the battle off pit road. 
Jeff Gordon runaway winner of the race off pit road Denny Hamlin's two tire change gained him four positions and Casey Mears <laughs> took gas only and picked up 23 positions We're under caution for the third time. Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by the durability tested Fire HD, engineered by Amazon. 108 laps complete. Jeff Gordon's been out front for 84 of them. Almost all of the race. Jimmy Johnson has led for 12. And Joey Logano, six laps. Those are your three highest lap leaders of the race so far with 92 laps to go. We're under caution for debris. See why one of the greatest names in NASCAR trust the most winning name in NASCAR at Chevy.com slash Dale Jr. Fastest lap of this race in the draft from Sprint. Greg Biffle, his Ford, 201.8 miles per hour. Sprint will cut your rate plan in half. Bring them your Verizon or AT&T bill. Turn in your old phone. Sprint will cut your rate plan in half. Visit a retail store or Sprint.com slash half price. We showed you in replay the penalty on Jimmy Johnson for men over the wall too soon. Crew chief Chad Knaus had this plea following the penalty. NASCAR, I would appreciate an explanation. We do not see what we did wrong. Our pit official will not tell us what we did wrong. We need some help so we can adjust, so we can appease you guys. We need help, NASCAR. If you want us to try to conform, we do not know what we did wrong. 
I mean, Andy Petrie explained it. it. It sounds like, though, they may not actually be telling Chad Knauss why he was penalized seems to be the frustration. Hey, Andy, run down there and explain that to Chad, will you? No, no. <laughs> Two things that was timely for that caution right there. I think that was a huge break for Jimmy Johnson and for Carl Edwards and for Kyle Larson and a lot of those drivers that had a penalty under the green flag stop. The other thing, which is one reason I think the majority of the drivers changed four tires, this puts us right there at a one-stop race. More pit penalties, tire violation for Justin Allgaier. The 42 crew for Kyle Larson throwing equipment. Eric Almarola, a men over the wall violation. Ready to go back to green. Denny Hamlin's Toyota to challenge Jeff Gordon from the front row. Green flag. Gordon shows the outside for the restart. One reason, teammate Casey Kane right behind, while Hamlin has Joey Logano on his rear bumper. A Toyota and a Ford battling two Chevys on the outside. Yeah, one thing, I, I just think back to last year, Denny Hamlin had a car that could have won this race. He had a radio issue. He couldn't communicate with his spotter or his crew chief until very late in the race, he ended up second. But remember, there were no rule changes to these cars from a year ago. These are the same cars, same rules, same everything as we raced here a year ago. So you would assume if you had a good car last year, you probably have a good car this year. One fellow who doesn't know that is right in the midst of it. Ty Dillon, the 33, the yellow car on the outside. It's his very first Daytona 500. A driver that had elected the first part of this race to ride in the back, and now he's up there mixing it up. Now his crew chief, Brian Patty, went with just right side tires, but Clint Boyer in that 15 car, he's up inside the top 10. Boyer's doing a little tippy toeing right now. You know, he's been on eggshells. He wrecked a couple of cars, wasn't very happy after qualifying last week. Taking his time, working his way to the front. And to follow up, Casey Mears, who gained 23 positions with fuel only, they decided later in this caution to come back for tires. So he didn't retain that position at the front of the field for the restart. I think Booty Barker said, hmm, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. <laughs> the storm's still brewing. <laughs> That's right. I better come back and get me some tars. Second longest driver crew chief pairing on pit road. Booty Barker, Casey Mears. Behind Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss. Yeah, Jimmy and Chad, they've been together 13 years. This is their 14th season together. What happens in a situation like we're in right now, Mike? This is when the crew chief starts telling the guys that lost the draft earlier, don't let that lead pack get away from you. A little bit of desperation sets in here because you start saying, I got to hang on to that front pack. Don't want them to get away like they did the last time. That front pack, Daryl, is nearly the whole pack. Right now, it's looking like uh, some of the uh, preliminary races we've seen down here. And of course, we usually see a lot of action when these cars are bunched up like they are right now. 37 cars on the lead lap. And for the lead, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Joey Logano. Ooh. Look at Boyer. Boy, Boyer just slid he right up slid. in front of Hamlin in that 11. Boy, he did. I think a little give and take right there. Keselowski, Casey Kane might have bumped just a little bit coming into the trial before wide. And I tell you what, wow. Jeff Gordon's not in a very good spot right there right now. A guy that's led this whole race is drifting back through the middle of the pack here. I'm not sure if there's something wrong with his car, tires adjustment or whatever, but he's fallen back some from uh, that earlier run he had. See him right there. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads for the first time today in the Daytona 500. But rather than go to break, our friends at Aflac thought you'd like to get our analyst thoughts on speed. Who has it? Who needs it? And who just might be sitting on more than they've let on uh, thus far in this race? You know, I can remember, Larry, we used to come down here and 200 miles an hour wasn't even conceivable. We didn't think we could run that fast. And these cats are out there practicing a 202. 
Well, we, we were concerned where the speeds would be with the temp going up. And the best I can tell, it looks like to me, almost 40 of our drivers, they've run a lap over 200 miles. Yeah, we've hour. seen 201 here a, a little bit earlier. So uh, the speeds are still there. These cars are really fast. But you know what, Larry? I think that's part, don't you think that's partly for no rule changes? You get a chance to kind of shine and buff and fluff a little bit on the same old car you had last year? I think it's an opportunity to try to win the Daytona 500. <laughs> well, the best thing I've seen all day is a lack of single file racing. It's hard to make 200 miles an hour in a parade look really exciting. And you know, Daryl, you and I were talking earlier. I think they've all learned their lesson about riding in the back that when you get ready to go, you may not be able to get there. Can Thanks only again to Aflac one. for helping us stay with the action. Only Aflac offers the speed of one day pay, keeping you in the race. Here comes Harvick on the inside. Now Harvick has led very few laps in the Daytona 500, but he has led the last one. Both the Dillon boys have had their turn toward the front of the pack. There's the number three with older brother Austin. Vince? Yeah, he spent a lot of time mid pack and further, but he has moved up to the front. The car is working much better after some Gil Martin adjustments. This is the third car for Austin Dillon this week. He's already wrecked and destroyed two. This is the one that won the poll last year at the Daytona 500. He wants better than the poll this time. He wants the race. But actually, he and Clint Boyer seem to be on that same agenda earlier in this race before the halfway mark is staying in line, riding out back, just staying in touch. When you've wrecked, Clint's wrecked a couple of cars. And, 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 and Austin's wrecked a couple of cars. So you want to, you know, tippy toe a little bit here early on. Here's a familiar sight. 15 cars at the front, double file. From there on back, everybody's worried about losing touch with the front, and they're three wide from there on. Yeah, I'm not liking this. I'm not liking this right here. Right smack in the middle of that group of 15. The number one. In red and black is Jamie McMurray. Chris? Well, prior to that last stop, Jamie McMurray really complaining about a vibration in that car. The crew told him after the stop that they were missing a lug nut on the right rear. Jamie Max now saying no more vibration. The car is good. While most teams have been complaining about their cars being too tight, Jamie Max saying that car too loose all day. And Jamie McMurray, one of the drivers that actually changed four tires on that last trip to pit road. Jamie McMurray has won, the day, has won twice at Daytona with a combined laps led in those two wins of just five. Kevin Harvick coming toward the front mat. Mike, Kevin have been complaining about except for the first run today, the car had a unique vibration. They thought it might have been a loose wheel, but when they pitted, they took four simply to double check that they did not have a loose wheel. They didn't. Rodney Childers reminded Kevin that last year they had the same issue in the 500. Half the event, they had a vibration. They think it's more just due to the tire and everything being so rigid here, it's the same tire since 2013. There is, Larry, one rule change for this Daytona 500. NASCAR no longer monitors how many lug nuts are tight to the wheel on pit stops. Well, NASCAR felt like it's self-policing, that if there's a lug missing or lugs loose, that driver's going to feel it, and it's not going to be long, and he'll be back to pit road. Yeah, I've talked to several of the guys, and they said, look, it's not really an issue because when the wheel is loose, these things shake so bad that you're going to come to pit road. And so the situation polices itself. Pretty much. Look at it, Kevin Harvick in that four car. He can win three races in a row if he wins this thing. Two thirds distance in the Daytona 500.
The Daytona 500 Hot Fox is sponsored by the dependable, long-lasting Chevy Silverado. 21 cars in the lead draft. Right now, 37 on the lead lap. Four Chevys at the front. Earnhardt, Harvick, Austin Dillon, and Truex, then the Ford of Brad Keselowski. Let's have a look at today's Budweiser race summary. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is your leader. Tony Stewart trying for the 17th time to win the Daytona 500, involved in a crash at lap 41. 15 lead changes among nine different drivers. Jeff Gordon has led 87 laps, by far the most of anyone today. Tell you what, this group right here, this middle group, this right, right here starting with Joey Logano and back to, I don't know, I can't tell how far back, but they are doing some slicing and dicing now. I'm telling you, they're inside, outside, middle, three wide. A lot of uh, close calls. Don't know how long they can get away with just a close call. That's uh, Regan Smith and Justin Allgaier at the tail end of that pack. Then a bunch of cars single file behind them. Well, they're just forcing their way into line. I mean, if, uh, somebody will go to the middle, then they'll just force their way into that outside line, and that's all well and good. And the room's there, but I've seen a couple of moves where somebody had to really get on the brakes to let them in. Joey Logano trying to bring this group toward the front. There's Logano's yellow number 22. He's trying to catch his Penske Ford teammate, Brad Keselowski, last of the five car breakaway at the front. Yeah, that group he's pulling along, it's about 20 drivers in a big wad. Seventy three laps to go with what Larry two more pit stops actually Mike it's borderline on one more stop but I mean very borderline. Now after a penalty the seventy eight Martin Truex Junior up to fourth place Jamie. Very nice rebound for this team. Too fast entering was the penalty. He was shuffled back as a result. Now he's moving forward in a car that he said he didn't think was as good as his Sprint Unlimited car, but they've been adjusting each stop. In the last round of stops, they made an adjustment, didn't even put new tires on it, and he's happy. Yeah, I was going to say they made that ground up, Jamie, and they elected to go with fuel only just to try to get that track position. Just another one of those things that you, you, you just almost unheard of through the years to come down here. Man, you're begging for a caution to throw four tires on these things. And now the guys are able to do two lefts. And in his case, in the Martin Trick Jr., no tires. That is amazing. Jimmy Johnson has rebounded nicely from that pit road penalty. Riding with Sam Hornish. And the number 18, Matt Crafton, the two time and defending Camping World Truck Series champion, who has been a Sprint Cup test driver for Joe Gibbs Racing. Joe and JD Gibbs felt he had the most experience of all the available drivers to put behind the wheel today. And Matt Yoakum, Matt Crafton, doing a great job. Doing an excellent job right now. Now, can you imagine Friday night he competed in the truck race? Saturday, he drove his motor home back to North Carolina. When he was getting close to home, he ordered takeout, sushi. And then, as he pulled into his driveway, his phone started blowing up with text messages. And he said, honey, we are going to be turning around and flying back to Florida. And then that's when the whirlwind really continued on. Doing a great job so far. He's just telling the 18 guys that he's just going to school. Remember, his first Sprint Cup start every lap is a learning lesson, and he's just going to school right now, riding mid pack. Yeah, Kyle Bush, Samantha, the old crispy uh, M&M's car looks pretty good. Danica Patrick in the number 10, right behind. This is. Depending on how you count, it's her third or fourth car this speed weeks. Three times they have had to put a car in the truck and go to a backup. This car is actually the one wrecked in the Sprint Unlimited and repaired. And uh, Jamie looks like Danica is running well. And this is an oldie car. So many people bring a brand new race car here. Well, this one, this is its fourth Daytona 500. Ran twice here with Ryan Newman and last year with Kurt Busch. Danica saying the handling has just been tight and they've actually made more adjustments on this race car than anybody else in my section. Trying to get it better. She's not fully happy with the 10 car yet. Well, this, this one of her best racetracks. No question about that. She's been in the top 20 almost the entire day. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has now led 18 laps.
135 laps complete. Dale Earnhardt Jr. out in front of the field. He has now led 22 laps. And the complexion of the race changes when the car that's been fastest all week is out front. Brad Keselowski noted. I mean, yeah, Dale's just pulling this draft so fast. Nobody can keep up. 10, 10 4, not a surprise. Dale's too quick. So here's your nationwide performance update on Dale Earnhardt Jr. On Thursday, he had to start from the back and go to the front due to a height violation after his qualifying lap last Sunday. But today he started up front and run up front. He's been no further back than eighth place all day. Well, you know, Dale Jr. always said, I, I really don't care to drive the three car, but I would like to keep the Earnhardt legacy alive and moving. And if you do the numbers, his dad, including all special events, Xfinity Series and all, won 34 races here at Daytona. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has won 15. If he can get that 88 car to victory lane, that will be 50 Earnhardt wins at Daytona. Wow. And that's the Dale Jr. Nationwide performance update. At the top of our show, Larry talked about dark horses. Drivers you might not expect to be in position to win the Daytona 500. However, Sam Hornish running the number nine for Richard Petty Motorsports now is in seventh place. Vince? Well, and his crew chief, Drew Blickensdorfer, says what he likes about Sam is that he's always thinking, how can I get this car in position to win? They're goal today hang to the back until it got inside of 100 laps then start moving forward and put yourself in position with 60 to go well we've got 63 to go and Hornish is inside the top 10 Matt Vince when Joey Logano joined Team Penske he said the first thing that he really noticed was the passion of success and it started from the top with Roger Penske all he cares about is winning on Thursday, Mr. Penske asked Joey, what about the car for tonight? And Joey says, well, I'm going to play it conservative. I want to run this car in the 500. He says, Joey, we have plenty of cars. There's only one trophy. Go out and win. <laughs> right now, they've got a little bit more work to do, Mike, to the 22. It's a lot more tight this run than the previous. Yeah, great story. Uh, Tony Stewart's car had been under repair. He came out, went back to the garage. Looks like Stewart will finish 42nd in but, this 500 you know Mike that that Roger Penske attitude but that's that's pretty much these owners attitude across the board whether it's Rick Hendrick Richard Childress uh, whomever it is uh, they all have that attitude we want to win everything we can at Daytona it, it, it's it, this is the place to get the job done man don't leave anything on the table A big gap after Michael McDowell in 18th place, the number 95, a gap of about 1.2 seconds to the second pack. So 18 cars in that front pack led by Dale Earnhardt Jr. For the most part, single file, but just ahead of McDowell, the number 19, Carl Edwards. Chris, how's he faring with his new team? Well, Carl Edwards had that penalty early on after he was running up front, uh, that penalty for speeding into pit lane. Edwards was making his way back to the front, but about 10 laps ago, he came over the radio and said, hey, guys, it is just way too crazy in the middle of this thing. I, feel, I think there's possibly a wreck coming on here. So he went to the back. He dropped back to about 30th. But now that they're two by two again, he's pushing back to the front. Yeah, I think he saw the same thing we were seeing there for a little while when they were three and four wide and kind of banging around, bouncing off each other. But now they've separated a little bit and Carl's on the move. And we're somewhere around, I'd say, 10 to 15 laps from what would be green flag pit stops. They're really going to need to go to around lap 154, 155 if they want that to be their final stop under green. 141 complete this time by Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads his 28th lap of this Daytona 500.
Wright coming your way with this Fox Sports Live update. Time for three things you need to know. Giant skipper Bruce Bochy returns to spring training this morning, just three days after having two stents inserted into his heart. In other news, LeBron James passes Allen Iverson today, moving into 22nd place on the association's all-time scoring list. The four-time MVP has over 24,000 points and counting. And for complete post-race coverage from Daytona, catch Victory Lane, 5 p.m. Eastern, over on Fox Sports 1. Tune in. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Warner Brothers Pictures. Run all night in theaters everywhere, March 13th. Time for a KFC race break. NASCAR on Fox and drivers are hoping to add a Daytona 500 title to their bucket list. A quick recap, it's been a Chevy show and more specifically all afternoon. The Chevys of Rick Hendrick Motorsports team, Jeff Gordon starting on the pole in this, his 23rd and final Daytona 500. The four-time champ and three-time Daytona 500 winner with his family and introductions, an emotional moment, chatting with us on the pre-race show. and. Taking it all in, a couple of drivers like Matt Crafted in for the injured Kyle Busch in the 18 car. His first cup race, Regan Smith in for Kurt Busch in the 41. Gordon led that first lap. In fact, he's led the most laps. Last seven races, Gordon has led the most laps in. He has not won those races. Tony Stewart, 0 for 16 in the Daytona 500. Into the wall, there was some dirty air. Looked like it was caused by the 19 car of Carl Edwards. A close look, it creates that loose handling car of the uh, 40. And that's what caused the mishap. Matt Kenseth was also involved in that as well. Gordon has led the most laps, but Dale Earnhardt Jr., his Chevy and Hendrick Motorsports teammate, taking the lead here. Remember, last year, Dale Earnhardt Jr. took the lead late, led 54 of the final 70 laps to go on and win that race. This has been a KFC race break as we head back upstairs to Larry, Daryl, and Mike. Thanks, Chris. One driver has been able to work the outside to get past Dale Earnhardt Jr. or Jeff Gordon, and it's been that yellow and red Ford, the Roger Penske car of Joey Logano, and he has done it this time. He's led the last three circuits. This is the second time, or third time, that Logano has led today. See, I wonder what his teammate, Brad Keselowski, thinks now. He said that nobody could do anything with Dale Jr. He was in the 88. He's pulling him around here, pulling him around too fast. Logano, with the help of that 48 car, Jimmy Johnson, the 24 out there of, of Jeff Gordon, they pushed him to the lead. He dropped to the inside, and he's been there ever since. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson in the 48, he had been trying and trying to pull that outside line. He could not do it, but as soon as Joey Logano when that 22 got there, he pulled him right up there. All right, the production truck is telling us to go to commercial, but thanks to Aflac, we're going to stay right here and talk about how speed in the pits may determine who wins this Daytona 500. Well, what I'm seeing, we're about four to six, maybe seven laps to that pit stop. It's going to be a green flag stop. Think about the last time. Five pit road speeding penalties, and then the 48 crew going over early. A little late for a mistake now. Yeah, what do you but do you think it'll be, what, is anybody going to take fuel only? Uh, two tires, four tires? What do you think the strategy will be right now? Well, you're going to have to fill it with fuel. Yep. So two tires are free, and that's why I said earlier, I think all of those drivers did four where they can do this time. Do two just this time. I know we have electronic monitoring of the speeding penalties, but have we ever seen this many penalties on pit road in 1-500? But honestly, with the pit road technology, yeah. I'm surprised there's not been more. But remember, remember, Mike and Larry, and, and, and there are no new penalties. They're just being monitored differently. They are now being monitored electronically, not by somebody standing down there and saying, well, I wasn't sure if he was over too soon or not. Now they know for sure. And that levels a playing field for everybody. Nobody gets an advantage that way. Whoever gets off pit road first, that could be the game changer. Thanks, Aflac, for letting us sort this out as far as pit stops. Jamie? Michael McDowell doing a nice job today. He likes his car in the draft. He can move all around, had dropped back for safety. This call was right sides only. 
You know, the other thing I remember about that last set of green flag stops, that one lap where we had about 20 to 25 drivers on pit road at one time, I'm wondering if they'll mix it up a little different this time or try to. Now, Martin Truex made his stop while we were in the last commercial because they didn't get it full of fuel the last time in. Yeah, he only ran 38 laps, so he pitted with 55 to go. He'll definitely have to make another stop. Casey Kane on pit road. Here he comes. That's uh, one of the early leaders coming to pit road. A.J. Allmendinger with him. And a few more toward the back of that lead draft. Three more cars coming to the pit lane. Matt. And Mike, he's hitting pit road. Casey Kane is without his teammates. There are two more laps before they're going to pit. Kane, a great run this past run. The first time that the car has not been too tight. Four tires for the five. David Reagan, David Gilliland, and Michael Waltrip on pit road this time. There's Reagan's Ford. Yeah, to me, the magic number is lap right about lap 154 to make it a one stop. <laughs> Larry, the magic number is now. Yeah, here we come. <laughs> Kevin Harvick, Jeff Gordon, Carl Edwards, Jamie uh, Hornish and more. Jamie? And Clint Boyer in that 15 was in the back for quite a while. Been working on the car to make it better. It's handling better. Let's go over to Chris. Carl Edwards was pushing his way back towards the front there. Told the team right before he came in, still a little bit too tight. Going to do four tires on this stop. Matt? 2007 champ in the 500, Kevin Harvey. They're going to go four tires on this stop. Car pretty solid, no major complaints this run. Next time by, the Penske cars will come. Yeah, all the Childress cars and the Richard Petty Motorsports cars on this lap. And now Joey Logano is going to need to lead another group in. Greg Biffle stays out, but here comes Logano, Earnhardt, Johnson, Keslowski, and one car went way out into the grass. Johnny, Johnny Sauter. Sauter, yeah. Jamie? And Jimmy Johnson rebounded nicely after that penalty over the wall too soon earlier, but his car is good. A four-tire stop here. Junior saying when he's out front, the car just a little bit tight in turn four, but when he's up underneath somebody, tight at both ends of the racetrack. Four tires, Matt. Team Penske on pit road with both cars. Four tire change for Joey Logano. You can see the wrench in the back window. Significant adjustment. The car much tighter this past run. A handle off the corners. Logano and Keslowski get out right together. Well, two cars between them, but perhaps they'll be able to link up as teammates would like to do in the closing stages. Boy, the 42 car, he has had it locked up ever since he came off the racetrack, smoking all four tires, trying to get that thing woed up. I think he actually blew the right front tire out. Kyle Larson makes it into his pit stall. So does Ricky Stenhouse and Greg Biffle. Vince? Been eventful for the 42 of Kyle Larson today for sure. Two penalties on pit road. They uh, slipped through the box once. They've got a shifter inside the car that has broken off. Trying to get Kyle Larson to the end and in a position to do some work. Going to the four tire change. Now that should complete this round of green flag pit stops at lap 155. 45 laps to go. Let's have a look at Kyle Larson, Darrell, oh, trying oh. to get down to pit road speed. I don't know how he ever even got slowed down as much as he did. He blew out the front tires. I mean, he had this thing locked up, sliding. Look at that. That's coming off turn four. He must have been doing 180 mile an hour. We had 10 and a half hours of practice. I'm not sure anyone practiced coming on pit road more than Kyle Larson did during those practices. And I think he did that a lot in the, when he was doing these practice runs uh, earlier in the week. So, uh, man, he needs to back her down a little bit. Son. <laughs> He comes back on track, one lap down to the leaders. Joey Logano has a friend two cars back. That's that white Ford of Brad Keselowski. Jimmy Johnson right in the middle in a Chevrolet. The orange car is the Toyota of Carl Edwards. Yeah, we have a lot, lot of multi-driver, multi-car teams, but I'm not sure any two drivers work together better as teammates than Brad Keselowski, Joel Logano. 11 wins total last year. Yeah, I, I thought I found it interesting, though, that he thought Dale Jr. was a lot quicker than everybody else, that nobody could get up there and challenge him. But Joey Logano drove right around Dale Jr. and now leads the race. 156 laps complete. Sometimes the hardest part of 200-mile-per-hour racing is slowing it down to 55.
The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Sprint. Bring us your Verizon or AT&T bill and we'll cut your rate plan in half. Visit Sprint.com forward slash half price. By Advance Auto Parts, the brand for guys who love getting under the hood. And by Toyota. Let's go places. 160 laps complete. Brad Keselowski's day may have yeah, gone up in smoke. Know. Yeah, it did. He just, uh, the engine, it started smoking in the middle of one and two down here, and then it let go off of two, but Boy, everybody did a good job of getting around him. 250, 260, 245, 260. Everything else is good. Keselowski was 13th when this happened up in turn two. Watch the white two car. Yeah, you'll see you start to see a little smoke trailing out of it and then all of a sudden it just turns into a big ball of smoke right here. Nice job of holding his line and wait until the inside was clear to move down. Sam Hornish did a nice job of laying off of him. Second engine of the day Landon Castle early in the race and now Keselowski brings out the day's fourth caution flag. I believe Jamie McMurray in the one he got in some all and he got in the outside wall. He just hit pit road with a ton of damage. Yeah it looks like he spun backwards in the wall there. The whole back of the car is crunched up. Riding with Sam Hornish. Oh, it's Sam a did an amazing full job. Of oil. Brian Newman on pit road, the right front, and there's there's the side of Jamie McMurray's car. It looks to me like they may, these two may have run into each other, the 31 and the uh, and the and the one. Yeah, and then Ryan one had nowhere to go. Yeah, one got into the oil and slipped up into the wall, and then Ryan was coming right behind him. He was probably in the oil too. Ryan Newman and 31 slammed into the back of Jamie McMurray. So trouble for Newman and McMurray. Pit road is open on that green flag pit stop sequence. Dale Earnhardt Jr. went from second to 12th. The reason we found out is they held him while they got that fuel cell completely packed with fuel in case they could go green flag all the way to the checker. The caution flag erases that strategy. Well, we've only run about five or six laps. If you think you can't make it, this is a good opportunity to come to pit road and top that thing off with fuel. I think this is a big break for Martin Truex Jr. in that 78. Remember, he had to short pit because he was not full, so this gives him an opportunity. Yeah, there's Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon on pit road. It uh, looks like he's going to top up, but that car hadn't been as good the last couple of runs as it had been earlier in the day. It's been falling back through the field a little bit. He leads McDowell, Patrick King and about half the field onto pit road. Matt? And Jeff Gordon's only going to get about four and a half seconds of fuel to top him up. Meanwhile, his teammate, the five of Casey Kane, similar situation, he's already topped off. Well, this is insurance. You yep. think about our last 10 Daytona 500s, we've had six green-white checkers. Austin Dillon had to back up in his pit stall to get out, partially blocked. Brad Keselowski, past series champion, has brought out the fourth caution flag of the day.
Jimmy Johnson has led 18 laps today. He, Carl Edwards, and Clint Boyer are the first of 12 drivers who did not pit under this caution flag. It's a nice rebound for Johnson. Glad my portfolio doesn't look like his graph today, although I like where it ends up. He had that pit road penalty for men over the wall too soon, which dropped him down to 40th. He is now the race leader. To the garage, Jamie Little. Smoke is still billowing back here and oil everywhere. Any idea what happened there? Yeah, I guess an oil containment issue. Uh, it, something happened. The bottom of the oil pan's knocked out of it. So, you, you know, you imagine you broke uh, something really important. Uh, it's a shame. You know, we're just starting to get position, Jamie. The last run here is right in front of us. And, um, you know, we're running up in the top ten. I think we just got the top five. And um, it broke. That's the way it goes. Brad Kozlowski's hopes for a Daytona 500 victory are over today. You know, normally, Larry, if you blew up in a Daytona, you say, OK, well, we're done. But with the new chase format, not so much. Jeff Gordon has clinched the bonus for leading the most laps today. Sprint will cut your rate plan in half, bring them your Verizon or AT&T bill, and turn in your old phone. And Sprint will do just that. Visit a Sprint retail store or Sprint.com slash half price. Thirty five cars on the lead lap were thirty six laps away from settling the twenty fifteen Daytona five hundred each week. Look for the race day advanced auto parts driver spotlight. Today we caught up with Kevin Harvick only on Fox Sports one. Everything OK with Jimmy Johnson. Listen to this. Any need for concern? I felt it go under me. I, it looked like a hose, so I'm, I'm willing to stay out here. Yeah, I'm trying to look at that yeah, front valence area, and everything actually looks pretty good on that 48 car. Yeah, it looks fine. Green flag with now 35 laps to go. How about our man Carl Edwards? He finally overcame that penalty he had early in the race, and now he's up here with the help from Clint Boyer leading the Daytona 500. Two Toyotas on point. Kevin Harvick, Jimmy Johnson and Chevrolet is with Paul Menard on the inside trying to close. Joey Logano looking low and there is uh, Matt Kenseth. Rather Kenseth still two, two laps off the pace. This race could be coming to number 24, Jeff Gordon. He thinks so. Yeah, it's going to get wild now, so here's what we came for. Yeah, man, let's do it. And, that's what, and Jeff knows that. I mean, as, as he get to the end of this race, no more give and take. The gloves come off. It's every man for himself. Teammate out the window. Drive the wheels off of it. Drive it like you stole it. Matt? Insurance policy for Gordon. They came in and took four seconds of fuel. Alan Gustafson told him, push the other drivers that are in front of you. They did not stop and top off. They could be questionable. He's like, I can see they're trying to save you. Push them, push them, push them. Daryl, everything you've learned all week long comes down to this, putting yourself in a position to win. And, and this is my favorite time of the race. This is when you get that cooperation. I'll work with anybody. I'll cooperate with anybody if you can help me win this race. How about here? That little tight right there, a little bump in that left rear. Move up out of my way. I'm in a hurry, dude. I won't get to run there next year. I want to win this thing. Yeah, I mean, we've got 23 drivers within a second of each other as we're closing in on about 30 laps Ooh. to go. Whoa. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson came down almost into the 19. That slows Edwards, and Kevin Harvick takes advantage on the inside, number four. Wow. What are we doing? <laughs> Jeff Gordon called it. It's going to get wild. But I see two of the fastest cars all day long in that outside line. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that 88, Joy Logano in that 22. 
I'll tell you one thing. If I uh, if I was in this race, I'd be want to want to be right where that 48 or that 88 is right now. But I wouldn't want. Don't look back. You don't want to see what's going on behind you. Never mind that single file orderly procession before the caution flag. It's now double and triple file all the way back from the front trio. That's just been the, these two cars have been the best two cars here all weekend. The 48 and the 88. Uh, they just been the cars to beat. Top to bottom, Dale Jr. We've seen that move before this week. He used it to win his Budweiser dual race. But Jimmy Johnson covers the spot. Dale Jr. wants that lead back. I mean, he wants to get up there. He knows it's, it's go time, baby. It's no time to play teammates. We got to race. Oh, out there sliced and dice, and there's Joey Logano in that yellow 22. Well, he's the only cat that's been able to pass that 88 by himself. Darrell with 31 laps to go. Why are those two blue teammates at the front fighting, not following? They're not. Listen, at this point, he is not your teammate anymore. He's your competitor. You outrun the competitor, whatever it takes. Looked like Joey Logano in that 22 gave Jimmy Johnson in the 48 a pretty good push down the back straightaway. Logano's been the only car that could drag that outside lane to the front against the bottom feeders that hug the yellow line. Look at this. I mean, I mean, where do you where do you go? I mean, you got very little room. Everybody's wobbling all over the place, getting a little loose, pushing around. Look at that car, that 11 car in front of him sideways. Oh, you heard Gordon had to lift had that to little lift. throttle there. Yeah. The turbulence, when you're in this group right here, like you see the turbulence off these cars, it moves your car around whether you want it to or not. Look at those cars snake down that back straightaway. In simple terms, that was two great shots of the eye of the storm. And, and the cars are hard to drive. I know in the, in the banking, they got downforce. They're stuck to the banking. But I get up on these straightaways, and particularly through the trioval, they're loose as a goose. 30 laps, 75 miles to go. 29 as they cross the stripe. And a lot of drivers from 10th on back feeling they're not up there in position to win. Push is about to come to shove. This is what it's all about. I mean, we've raced here all day long, and we've seen this kind of racing all day long. But right now, this is when it gets so intense. And you know you can't give up anything at this point. When I look at our top 25 drivers, every one of them feels like I still got a chance here with less than 30 to go. But what I see, Larry, is everybody knows they need to be in the front. They need to be leading this thing, because we've seen it. The guy in the front can hold everybody else at bay. Denny Hamlin's been trying to make that middle lane work and that black number 11. But the inside and outside lanes, just a bit too strong at the moment. That's three good ones right there. You got the Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin, and Carl Edwards side by side. Rush hour at 201 miles per hour. You know when we say the cream rises to the top? Baby, she has risen. There's no skim milk here. No. All the way back. Look at all the drivers in that lead pack. David Gilliland, the good news, he's only a second off the lead. The bad news, he's 24th. <laughs> and there comes Kevin Harvick in that number four, getting some help from Paul Menard in the 27. Still three wide, three by three, about six, seven rows deep. And this is when you hold your breath. I mean, you're, you, you, just, you just feel it. Twenty-seven laps to go. Jimmy Johnson has just led his twenty-sixth lap of the day. You're watching Fox NASCAR coverage. She knows it.
rookie Ryan Blaney, second generation racer driving for the famed Wood Brothers. The engine has let go, and that puts us under caution flag number five. You see him go up in a ball of smoke, and he's right up in the middle of the. These guys and gals have done an amazing job today of keeping from running over people when they have problems like this. But I look at that 21 car, I think about 1963, Tiny Lund driving a 21 car. You know what made that day special? Ran the whole race and never changed tires. Check it up here, check it up, check it up, down, 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 down. You're clear, you're clear, yellow's out, yellow's out, yellow's out. Five times car owner Glenn Wood's been to Victory Lane in the 500. He's been to every Daytona Speed Week since 1947. I asked Leonard, how, I said, how was you able to do that? He said, I tuned that car where the tires, all four tires were sitting flat on the racetrack and the car never slipped. Wow. All right, Larry, we've got 23 laps to go this time. Do you pit? Do you stay out? Well, I don't want to do anything to put my driver back in that eye of the storm. Huh. And, I, you know, the guys that did not pit the last caution, they have about 15 to 18 laps on their tires. I don't see any of the leaders coming to pit road. We'll probably see some of the drivers on in the back of the pack come, but I think all the leaders will stay. The first six drivers and eight of the top ten did not pit under the last caution. Among the top ten, only Jeff Gordon and Martin Truex were in. But here comes Danica Patrick, the Dillon brothers, Sam Hornish, Justin Allgaier, and about six more. Fifth caution flag of the day. 23 laps to go in the Daytona 500 on Fox.
Chris Myers back track side, 21 laps to go under caution. Quick recap, Jeff Gordon, the pole sitter, he's clinched the most laps led in this race, 87 total. Tony Stewart going to be 0 for 17 in his career at the Daytona 500 after this earlier mishap. The fans were up because Dale Earnhardt Jr. took the lead, led 32 laps. Jimmy Johnson, his Chevrolet teammate, led three different times. 30 laps total and is your current leader, Brad Kozlowski, who was third in the Daytona 500 last year, never led, but had engine problems affecting Ryan Newman and Jamie McMurray, both previous or past Daytona 500 winners. And they are flying around like jets here at Daytona with Jimmy Johnson leading Joey Logano and Dale Earnhardt Jr. at the moment. Let's rejoin Darrell Waltrip, Larry McReynolds, and Mike Joy. Thanks, Chris. 20 and one half laps to go in Daytona. Jimmy Johnson. At the front of the pack, Joey Logano second. And Joey Logano has a concern based on the last two caution flags. Matt? Mike, it goes back to when Brad Keselowski's teammate lost an engine. Joey told the team, find out what happened and let me know if there's anything that I can do from inside here. And then, under the current caution, they gave him the word. They said uh, failure on the two car. Nothing you can do to help it. The 21 just blew up right there. Yeah, I believe so. A great job, Joey. Just keep looking forward. We're good here. So the two is his Penske teammate, Brad Kozlowski. The 21 is the Wood Brothers Ford, uh, which has an alliance with the Penske team. And Joey Logano's looking nervous. But that last voice was Roger Penske's voice. Just keep looking ahead. And you don't know how. Uh, the, it sounded like it, uh, Kozlowski's temps were a little high. Looking ahead, here's our Aflac 20 to go. Let's reset the field for this last burst of speed brought to you by Aflac. Who do you like? I'm going to stand by my man. I said Dale Jr. and I'm going to stick with him. Larry? Well, I, I like Dale Earnhardt Jr., but I'm not going to rule out Joey Logano in that 22 car. He's been fast all day long. And right behind them, Clint Boyer, Denny Hamlin, Carl Edwards, three Toyotas to try to run down those two Chevys and Fords at the front of the field. Well, that's our Aflac 20 to go. I'm not sure. We're done with caution flags just yet. Here's our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. Well, Mike, we've had five cautions for 22 laps. I'm back studying trends again. If you look at our last 10 Daytona 500s, the average lap that the last caution came out on Lap 194, six to go, and as I said earlier, the last 10 Daytona 500s, six green white checkers, a little overtime. I think the smartest thing you said was, we're not done with cautions yet. <laughs> well, let's find out. The Toyota Camry pace car is headed for pit road. Joey Logano on the inside. Jimmy Johnson had lane choice. He's on the outside. Row two, Earnhardt and Boyer, then Hamlin and Edwards, Gordon and Harvick, Truex and Biffle, the top 10. Green flag with 35 cars on the lead lap. Baby, this is a 20 lap shootout. That's what this is. For all the money and the big trophy. Not some little plaque and not some little little uh, check. We're talking big track, big, big check, big trophy. Big bobble by Clint Boyer in the 15 there. Gathers it back up. Junior loose Whoa, coming up through the that middle. That was not a good move. He's going to get caught in the middle here. Better watch out. Boy, when you get in that middle like Junior is, you just can't, you, there's nowhere to go. You just fall back, 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 back. And that's just that stay dry down the back stretch and into turn three from Ryan Blaney's engine, kicking up all that dust. Track should be clean in a lap or so. Boy, Junior went from near the front to probably back about 15th, looks like. Jamie, we saw Clint Boyer get loose there. Everything okay? Well, he was anxious. He was fourth lined up. His spotter told him and warned him about the Penske engines. He said, the next one is right ahead of you. And Boyer said, make sure I'm clear, boys. I'm going to try to clear him. And that's exactly what he did and made a small bobble doing it. When I look at this Harvick. pack here. Harvick oh. to the outside. Oh, I'll say. Three wide. Big Larry. move. 
And they trapped Carl Edwards in that 19, that orange 19 in the middle. He started sliding back, but he's starting to fight back now. Boy, you just, I mean, you get in a box. There's nowhere you can go. Boy, did you see, did you see Kent Boyer's car? I mean, that thing was swapping ends almost. Riding with Harvick, Boyer just ahead. Logano, 22 ahead of him, and then race leader Jimmy Johnson. We know Jimmy Johnson's won two Daytona 500s, Harvick's won one, but how about those other drivers? Logano, Hamlin, Boyer, Edwards, Truex, they've never won a Daytona 500. These guys are hungry, man. They want it. And I tell you, a guy that's really driving, I mean, hard as he can go and doing all he can, and that's 15 car Clint Boyer. He is hammering away on Joy Logano. You can do that in the straightaway, Darrell, right? Yeah, you can. Just don't do it going into third turn or into the first turn. That's not a good idea. No prohibition in the Sprint Cup Series against bump drafting. You think about Boyer, not only would he love to win a Daytona 500, it's been 77 races since he won a Sprint Cup Series race. Boy, this is when your, your, your mind, you're just, you're thinking, you're thinking, what can I do? What move should I make? Which lane should I get in? Who should I follow? Carl Edwards made a spot for himself in the middle. And then number 19, but can only get so far forward. We talked about the single car Trent team of Martin Trucks Jr. in the 78. I see Casey Mears in that white number 13 right up in the mix. And these are the guys that were at the front of the Sprint Unlimited the other night. Casey Mears had a fourth place finish in that race. He had a great run. And Martin Truex finished uh, second in that race. A great run. And here they are battling for the Daytona 500. Fifteen laps to go. Jimmy Johnson's led 37 of them. We're going to go side by side so you don't miss a moment as we close in on the checkered flag in the Daytona 500. Can you believe this three wide for the lead with 12 laps to go? Have you ever? <laughs> Not until no, now. I, I'm telling you, but this, you can't imagine, you, folks at home, you just don't know what, how much skill it takes to be able to drive these cars at 200 miles an hour side by side and not wreck each other. The 16th yeah. place car is within half a second of the leader. Look at this. I mean, we're three by three all the way back. Where yeah, the whole go? field's three wide. Where are you going to go? Jimmy Johnson trying to maintain some kind of advantage. But Denny Hamlin has been fast all week, and it's his turn at the front. Well, you got Jeff Gordon. He's finally working his way up here to get with Jimmy Johnson. That could be potent. But uh, that 78 and that 11 look like they're working pretty good together, too. 
And Joy Logano lurking up on the outside there. He's got to run. And Jeff Gordon in his final 500 right in the middle. Trying to make something happen with Carl Edwards and Casey Mears behind him. Yeah, Jeff led 87 laps and then he fell back and all of a sudden he has reappeared with that 24 car. This, this listen, trust me, this is not, you, don't try this anywhere else because these guys are the best in the world hanging on to these things for dear life with a check, a million and a half dollar check oh. dangling out there in front of them. Who's Johnson going to get it? Tried to get all the way to the high side, but Logano was already there. And here comes Logano's Ford on the outside against Johnson Chevrolet and Hamlin's Toyota on the bottom. This is one of those times when you want to help the guy in front of you, but you got to be careful where you do it. You see right there, you see the see the 22, the 15, and the 4. Bam, bam, bam. And look what it does. It pushes the 22 right to the lead. Yeah, it's almost like Joy Logano hung back a little bit, maybe drugged the brake where Boyer could give him that little boost. But Boyer got into three a little too. He couldn't hold the car down, lost a little ground right there, but he's coming back. He almost got into the fence. Nine laps to go. This is the greatest racing in the world. In the words of legendary broadcaster Ken Squire, Grandma, put your teeth in your pocketbook for this one. <laughs> this is a, I, I, I don't think I've seen a race quite like this in a long time down here. This is just, this is some good stuff, folks. Well, what's go I think what's going to happen, you look back there at about that third and fourth, fifth row, they're going to get impatient because right now they can't go anywhere. You know, what's going to happen is, is you're going to try to help the guy in front of you. You're going to try to push him to the lead. If you don't hit him in the right place and hit him at the right time, cause a big wreck. Three back. They're three back. They're zigging it. They're giving the all whoa, the push whoa, there. Whoa. Eight whoa. to go. Eight to go. Bottom line. Boyer came down into Gordon, but they separate yep. inches apart and less than that at 200 miles an hour. Boyer's car is just a little loosey goosey. He's been that way a couple of times. Look how Fort Logano is out there, but son, that's not a good idea right now because they're coming after you. It's like a big rubber band. One car gets out front and in that air, the pack will suck back up to the leader. That being three by three like that, that's a good thing for Logano, except when somebody on the bottom here, like uh, you see the 11 car, Denny Hamlin, he get a run up there and here you come in the 78. Martin Trex is trying to push Hamlin to the lead. These three by three and you can sit out there like Joey is. I think this is what Jimmy Johnson was worried about. That, 40, that 22 got out front. Could they get him back or not? The Fords showed speed in early practice. But in the races so far, haven't been much of a factor against the Hendrick Chevys and the Gibbs Toyotas. This now, Joey Logano is out front with just seven laps to go. Oh, this is where you got to be ready to block. Whichever line gets to push, if it's Boyer on the outside, you got to go high. If it's the 11 on the inside, you got to go low. And that's where the spotter and the driver got to work hand in hand here. Okay, behind the 11, they are three wide. You're clear everywhere. Behind the 11, they are three wide. That's the word for race leader Joey Logano You're coming to the strike. Good. Still six to go, man. Still six. Keep an eye on that 11. The 78's been pushing him nice. The first three are single file. That's his spotter, Tab Boyd, giving him that information. Yeah. And now we have a three-car breakaway at the front of the field. Logano, Hamlin, Truex. 78 is half off. Still one off of him. You're fine. You're okay. 48 giving a boost to the 78. 48 giving a boost to the 78. Fizzled out. Fizzled out. I like that. Fizzled out. He fizzled out. Kane and Johnson side by side. Menard coming on the inside. The yellow car. Man, he come off a corner, dust flying, smoking. Oh my gosh. Five to go. <laughs> and the lead pack is distilled now to just 18 cars. Boy, everybody is trying to figure out, can, I need some, I need a break here. I need an opening. I need a line to get moving here. Which line's it gonna be? Man, look at those cars wobble around, bobbling all over the place. Come. One to the bottom, one and a half to the top. 78, 5, 24, 88 bottom. 48, 15, 4 top. By one either lane. By one either lane, the bottom is the tightest right now. Four 
to go right here, four. That's Denny Hamlin's spotter, Chris Lambert. And as much as you'd like to say, leave me alone, I need to focus, you need that information. You've got to have that information. Casey Kane took a look way down low. Outside, bottom three. Still bottom three. Still with your hard out back, nothing ahead of the 78. Jeff still with you, half back in line. Can they make it to the finish? That, that's, that's what I keep asking myself. Can they make it to the field? Outside. 78 with you. Outside. That's Jimmy Johnson's radio. Earl Barbin, the spotter. Logano comes Still up outside. to cover the spot. Three, three to go. Three wide behind you. Four is in the middle. Four is in the middle. Yellow caution. caution Crash. Caution, front caution. straight away. Justin Allgaier. Down. That was well back of the lead draft, and we're <sighs> under caution. What happened over there? Good question. 33 blew right front, caught me and put me in the wall. And that was from Justin Allgaier. Ty Dillon's car had slowed, and now he is crawling onto pit road. There is the damage to Dillon. Well, the trends normally never let us down, and there's that caution with three to go. I knew it would. I knew they couldn't make it to the end. I just thought it would be a lot bigger than that, but they didn't. And it isn't over with yet. Thank goodness, NASCAR has an electronic scoring system using GPS transponders all the way around the track. Because with all that three wide, I would hate to have to sort out the running order. Now, Justin Allgaier is okay after he got tagged by Ty Dillon and turned at the start finish line. We saw him blowing up on the back straightaway over there, slowing down. I don't know if blowing up's the right word or not. We saw him slowing down. See, there he goes. He had a pretty big pack of drivers coming at him. Barely get by. Eric Almarola was all the way down in the grass in that 43 car. Tough way for the young Illinois driver to finish the 500. This is some of the most fantastic three wide racing ever seen in NASCAR. Our five hour energy big move of the race is going to be Joey Logano working that outside to take the lead. You know, those last 20 laps, nobody in this whole joint, everybody was standing up cheering. We went back racing at lap 181. That was 16 laps of three wide all the way back through the field. I see now why they didn't make any rule changes for Daytona. Because this is just the cars are fantastic. They handle great. They run great. Logano got a big push from Clint Boyer in the 5 Hour Energy Toyota. Could he have made that move without a push? No, I don't think so. That's that's what you're trying to figure out right now in your mind with who do I give that push to that maybe could shoot them to the lead. The problem is when you do that, you're probably going to stall out. You don't get the advantage. You give the guy in front of you the push and the advantage, but you don't get it too. So who do you help? Well, that happened Friday night in the truck series race. Terrio pushing his teammate who went on to victory lane while he got swarmed and ended up, I think, fourth. He was second with one to go. They are going to hold the field while they clean up down the front straightaway through the trioval and remove Justin Allgaier's car from the front straightaway. Joey Logano, your leader in a Ford. There's Denny Hamlet's Toyota in a second. Jimmy Johnson Chevrolet is third in this Affleck field reset. Martin Truex overcame a penalty like Johnson. Clint Boyer up for fifth. Kevin Harvick, the closer in sixth. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Chevrolet is seventh. His teammate Casey Kane is eighth. And their teammate uh, Jeff Gordon in ninth. Casey Mears, the 10th place car, also in a Chevrolet. Carl Edwards in a Toyota 11th. Greg Biffles Ford. Looks like he's even pushing Edwards there in, in the 12th place. Austin Dillon 
Last year's pole sitter, 13th. Ricky Stenhouse, 14th. All these cars are on the lead lap. David Gilliland for Front Row Motorsports, 15th. Kyle Larson got a free pass, got back on the lead lap. Matt Crafton driving for injured Kyle Busch in the 18th. In 18th. Now Paul Menard, 17th position for his Chevrolet. Trevor Bain, former Daytona 500 winner in 19th. Truck Series regular Johnny Sauter in 20th. 21st, banged up, bruised, not broken, A.J. Allmendinger. 22nd, Sam Hornish in one of Richard Petty's Fords. 23rd, Michael Annette. And 24th, Reed Sorensen, who had an issue in qualifying, crashed with Boyer and didn't even know if he'd have a backup car, much less make the Daytona 500. Eric Almarola also on the lead lap in all. 34 cars on the lead lap. Matt Yoakum. And it looked like Joey Logano was in the driver's seat. Now this caution, how does this shake up his run to the finish? Uh, it's expected. I think there's a 100% chance of a caution the last 10 laps here at Daytona. So uh, we've got a pretty good car. We've, uh, I think we'll have the, you know, we'll, we've got a good line behind us. 15 uh, has been a good pusher for us. Done an awesome job helping us get to this position. So uh, probably take that again. Good luck when you run to the checkers. Mike. Thank you, Matt. There is Roger Penske, the captain, up on the roof. And the man to the right is Tom Logano, who had his boy in a quarter midget at Meriden and Thompson, Connecticut, uh, I believe, before first grade. Yeah, all dads work hard for their kids, but I'm not sure any dad has worked any harder for their son's career than Tom Logano. He moved the family south from Middletown, Connecticut, to try to enhance Joey Logano's racing career, and it's worked out pretty good. And not just Joey's, but also Joey's sister. She was a figure skating. They moved <laughs> yeah. to Charlotte. There are no ice rinks in Charlotte. The Loganos built one. It's now very popular. Yeah, Danielle going from Connecticut to Atlanta for ice skating. I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Snowmobile, Snowmobile franchise in Miami. Red flag anticipating a green-white checker finish, Chris. Yeah, Mike, you saw Joey Logano in Las Vegas, a 12 to 1 betting choice to win this race. The emotional favorite for everybody, Jeff Gordon, his 23rd and his final ever Daytona 500 on the pole. It led 87 laps, has clinched that for this. Tony Stewart ended up getting loose out of the picture early, now 0 for 17 in his career at the 500. But the fans were up for Dale Earnhardt Jr., who led three different times and more than 30 laps, Jimmy Johnson. Leading as well with 30 lap, a 30 lap stretch. Brad Kozlowski talked about the engine problems for Ford. This affecting uh, Ryan Newman and Jamie McMurray, a couple of past uh, Daytona 500 winners. But a couple of storylines as we look at this. Logano trying to win his first ever Daytona 500. Jimmy Johnson trying to win his third. And Denny Hamlin in a Toyota trying to win his first and the first for Toyota here at the Daytona 500. Let's head back upstairs to Daryl, Larry, and Mike. Thanks, Chris. Red flag out as they continue to clean up on the front stretch. A hello to our Fox Sports colleague, Steve Burns, who's been on pit road for all of our Fox Sports 500. Named this fall as the anchor of the Camping World Truck Series for Fox Sports 1. But Steve home battling cancer and buddy, we're fighting with you. Hope you're back with us soon. Yeah, love you, buddy. Jamie. Jimmy Johnson second right now has led 40 laps today. Chad Knauss on the pit box for him. Chad, how long do you want Jimmy to remain behind the leader? <laughs> I don't <laughs> I want him in front of him. I want him to be the leader. So we'll just have to see what happens here. Uh, obviously, green, white, check or finish here at Daytona can be very unpredictable. I think there's a good opportunity that we will have more than one. So we'll just to see, it, see how it all shakes out. But quite honestly, we've had a, a great low Chevrolet this weekend and couldn't be happier with uh, the way the cars have performed for all of the Hendrick Motorsports teams. And, you know, Jimmy's doing a great job. We've led a bunch of laps. We had an unfortunate pit, pit penalty, and uh, we've come back from that strong. So uh, I think it shows the strength of this car and this team today. All right, and safe to say these cars and teams are good on fuel with this caution, guys. Thanks, Jamie. And he questioned that penalty. We've had 21 pit road penalties today uh, monitored by cameras up on the roof and NASCAR's new pit road officiating a system where the officials, many of them are now located in that trailer and also our Fox NASCAR rules expert, former crew chief Andy Petrie. Andy, 21 penalties. That seems like a lot. 
Yeah, but not really, Mike. I, it's a lot less than I thought we would see with this new system. I think it just shows just how professional these teams are, how well they prepared for it. Uh, there's, there's a lot of penalties that it has flagged, but the only real consequential penalty that we've seen is probably, or the highest profile penalty we've seen, is on Jimmy Johnson's team. Uh, a little miscommunication on when they could go across the wall because of the opening that they had prior to their pit stall. I think they clarified that with Chad Knauss. They've overcome that, obviously. Uh, and what a race. This has been one of the best Daytona 500s I've ever seen. But, but Andy, I think that number's a little skewed or artificial because I see about half of those penalties with too many men over the wall or throwing equipment. That, that was teams that was repairing wrecked race cars. Yeah, that's right. That's what added to that total. Mike says uh, 21 seems like a lot, and it would at the face of it. But... A lot of those were cars that were torn up. They've had all kinds of problems trying to fix it. They, they send extra people across the wall. Uh, those penalties really don't impact their race because they're not going to really finish anyway. But I, I've really been surprised how clean pit road has been with this new system. Well, thanks, Andy. It's going to be fun having you with us all season long. Kim Lopez, NASCAR's first Hispanic flag person, is the chief starter for today's race. And she's lifted the nearly seven-minute red flag, and we are back under caution. Pit Road is closed. We've completed now 199 laps. And NASCAR rules say that we can have as many as three attempts at a green-white checker. The first time that ever happened in the Daytona 500, it was today's pole sitter, Jeff Gordon, who went to victory lane. There was the restart in 2005. He had taken the lead just prior to that caution flag. And he holds off Kurt Busch to win his third 500. Hoisting the Harley Earl Trophy with car owner Rick Hendrick. 23 years, what a career. Yeah, for Jeff Gordon, who is going to run the entire Sprint Cup season for the last time this year. A lot of those memories have been made right here. Uh, a couple of years later, he uh, I think they ran first, second, and third. Uh, Jeff and uh, Jimmy and I think... Uh, Ricky Craven. Uh, Ricky Craven was driving the other car. So he's had some incredible memories here. Getting ready for our first attempt at green white checker. We listened in on second place Denny Hamlin. You know, get with uh, be the 48 or the uh, 15. I've seen this a thousand times. Whatever line gets organized the best always prevails at the end, whether it's the top or the bottom. You know, once we go three wide, we're dead. We're all dead. So push all you can and see what happens. These are the moments crew chiefs live for. Great car. What's going to be your biggest concern here on the restart, Dave? Well, we just got to get a clean restart and, and get a push from behind. You know, the biggest concern is what the guys behind you do. Are they going to stack us three wide or are they going to, are they going to push? So. It's exciting. Great American race. We're on the front row. row. We got a shot at it. What else could you ask for? The 2015 NASCAR season's here. Get in on the action and play the brand new Fox Fantasy Auto Racing game. New features, more fun, always easy to play on your PC or your mobile phone. Pick your team of five drivers and challenge your friends for weekly and season-long prizes at foxsports.com slash fantasy. The starter will display the white, the green flag. And then, if the leader takes the white flag under green, the next flag will end the race, either the checker or the yellow. And video photographic evidence will be used to display the order of finish at the moment of caution if that caution occurs. If we get a yellow flag before the leader takes the white, we'll try it again. And then, if necessary, try it a third time. I'm so, uh, Logano's taking the outside, Mike, and that's putting Jimmy Johnson up there or uh, Denny Hamlin up there alongside of him. I think it, he must think, Logano must think, that Boyer will help him, that he will get a better push from Boyer than if he started down on the inside. So I guess the question, can 32 drivers running 200 miles per hour, three wide, make it five miles, and oh, by the way, the winner takes over a million and a half? Mm, I, I don't feel good about this. Darrell, here's the other part of that logic. If Logano takes the inside, that puts Toyota, Toyota's 
nose to tail. Hamlin and Boyer on the outside, and clearly they would work together. Well, I know, but you take that 11 car, Hamlin, the 48 of Johnson, and the 78 back there of uh, Martin Truex. Those are three potent cars. I, I, I'm not sure what Logano's thinking other than I know that he and, uh, and Clint Boyer worked really well together early on to get him up front. But Dale, it seems like Joey has been the strongest up on the high side. Dale Jr. has been fastest all week. He restarts eighth. Does he have a chance? <laughs> Anybody in the top 20 got a chance. I can tell you that. Pace cars in to settle. The Daytona 500, Joey Logano brings them to the line. Denny Hamlin to his inside. It's on. Kevin Harvick in that four was really pushing Clint Boyer in that 15. Well, buddy, I tell you what, that was a pretty good restart for that 22 car. He can go where he wants to now. I think he'll stay with Boyer, though. I, I don't know what it is, but I think him and Boyer got a little something going. Hold your breath for the next 30 seconds as four cars try to break away from the field. Uh, that 22, it, it, it reminds me of Matt Kenseth and the Unlimited the other night. That 22 is out front. He's hard to catch. Magano has got some speed right now and seems like being out front and pulling these others and not affecting him at all. Here comes Harvick around the outside of Clint Boyer. And look who's with him. And here Dale comes Dale Jr. Jr. But look at the run that Harvick had off turn four in that four car. White flag this time. A lot of jostling back in the pack. The leader's going to make it under the white under green. Logano, Harvick, Earnhardt, Boyer, last lap. Guess what? The race is getting ready to start off turn two. It's all on from there on. Car smoking back of the field drops back out of play. Three wide. Big cluster coming off turn number four. Smoke, oh, man. trouble. Way in the back, but here come the leaders. The question is, are they going to throw the yellow? Or are they going to let them race back? Seven, eight car pile up in the back straightaway. Caution, Caution is out. Is out. Get, throw Caution, Logano. Keep coming. Just stay on the gas. Back straightaway. Stay on the gas. Coming to easy here. They say, they say roll out of the throttle. It's over, boys. Coming it's over. The, Middletown, Connecticut's Joey Logano wins the Daytona 500. Daytona 500, guys! <laughs> ah, hell yeah! Wow! Man, you are the man! Ninth Sprint Cup Series win for Logano in his 220th start. Wow! What a deal, guys! His previous best finish, ninth in this race. He won the Xfinity Series summertime race in 2011. Car owner Roger Penske is going to have to scramble down to victory lane to help celebrate. And the Fords may not have been fast all <laughs> week, but they were fast when it counted. Jeff Gordon is involved in the backstretch pileup. That ends this Daytona 500. Let's see where it starts. Here he is right here uh, as we go off. Uh, that's in the one and two. Start off the back off in the back straightaway over here. Let's see what happens. Four wide. Uh oh, and Austin Dillon tips Jeff Gordon. Yep. And it's on. Right in that spot where it didn't take much. And as they kept wrecking and more cars kept coming into the crash scene. NASCAR had to throw the caution. Three wide. You got help. A lot of help here. Two wide. Finish. Hello, oh, Ricky. Guys. Look at him work that wheel. Joey Logano. Sunoco fueling victories has fueled the winner of the Daytona 500 and all 43 drivers in this Sprint Cup Series field. It is the second Daytona 500 win for car owner Roger Penske to go along with his 15 Indianapolis 500 trophies. You know, he's worried about his teammates blowing up. He didn't have anything to worry about. He made it. Joey Logano celebrates in Daytona.
That's Tom Johnson, the, I should say, Tom Legato, the father of 24-year-old Joey Logano celebrating in the pits. The driver of the 22 car led just six laps, but the most important ones as he celebrates, and Matt Yochum is there. The kid quarter midget racer dreamed of one day going big time and beating Jeff Gordon. You not only beat Gordon, you beat everybody else in the field. Your first 500, can you believe it? I can't believe it. This is uh, absolutely amazing. The old Carmer train didn't work out for him so much, but uh, this is awesome. This is uh, Daytona 500. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? I was so nervous the whole, the whole race pretty much. And, uh, Man, it, it, Tab, my spotter, crew chief Todd, all the guys on this team, they worked so hard over the off season. This is our weakest racetrack, so super speedways. We were terrible at them last year. We worked really hard, and hard work equals results every time. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of Shell, Penzo, Coca-Cola, uh, Ford, everyone that helps us out uh, with this thing. It, unbelievable. Daytona 500. Hall. And then it boils down to a late restart. What was going through your mind? Everything. Um, I was trying to stay relaxed. That was the hardest part. You get a red flag, and they give you the opportunity to think of everything, you know? And uh, Clint Boyer was a, the best pusher out there today, and uh, he was able to uh, line up there at the end. We were able to push out ahead, and then, uh, you know, saw him crashing in the mirror. And I think even if we got to the check, I still felt pretty good about it. Just, uh, what an awesome, I can't believe, I'm still in like complete awe. I don't, I don't even know what to say right now. You came to this team to find a new home and you did. By the way, your dad is stuck outside the gate across the track. He can't cross over. But <laughs> Roger Penske kept talking to you on the radio, kept telling you, pumping you up. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because how the whole team gets really quiet though. When you're about to win the Daytona 500, yeah, red flag was just kind of quiet. We knew what we had to do. We had a really fast car. Um, just, you know, I had to make the right moves and not get snookered on the start and do something to make a mistake. And uh, I can't believe it. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be saying right now. This is, uh, this doesn't happen very often. You get one shot at this. It's such a build up the whole weekend uh, to the Daytona 500, all the, all the qualifying races and all the drama you go through. And then to, uh, you know, be here at the end and have your car sitting out in the museum and whatever else comes along with winning this race. Uh, wow. He's always going to be defined. Now the kid becomes a champ in Daytona. Kevin Harvick knows what it's like to celebrate a Daytona 500 victory. Close today, but you finished second. What's going through your mind on that final lap and you know you've got to catch Joey? I really thought everybody on our, everything on our Budweiser, Jimmy John Chevrolet was lined up pretty well coming down the backstretch. I was trying to back up to Junior and, and get a run, so we were lined up uh, with a little distance coming off of turn four, but just really proud of everybody uh, from Stuart Haas Racing, particularly on this number four team. Just got to thank everybody from Outback, Ditech, Hunt Brothers, and Mobile One for everything they put into this car to make it go around the track. Kevin Harvick, second at Daytona. Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. ran out front most of the day, but Dale, with 20 to go, you got shuffled to the back. What happened there? I just made a bad decision on that restart. I thought uh, the 48 was on the quarter panel, and he was going to get a good run down the back, and I wanted to get in behind him and, and get on the quarter panel with the guy in front of me. Somebody got on the outside, and I was, I was right stuck in the middle then. And just a bad decision. I should have stayed on the bottom, been a little more patient, but... Thought I had a good opportunity there, and it just didn't work out. Um, we had a really fast car, maybe the best car here. And uh, so I had a lot of confidence to stay, keep digging, and we got some of those spots back. But just a little disappointed, I let the guys down. Uh, Should have won the race. Congrats to Joey. Uh, thinking about Kyler in the hospital. Hope he's doing good, and hope he gets back real fast. And uh, we're ready to go to Atlanta. It's going to be a fun year. Well, Dale Jr. charged back up to third. Chris. As Joey Logano celebrates his first top five finish here at the Daytona 500, we'll talk with Jeff Gordon, who finished 33rd, led the most laps, and Michael Waltrip, fresh off the track, joins us right here. Don't go away.
Tom Legato, father of Daytona 500 winner Joey, finally worked his way across to celebrate with his son a special, memorable moment in the great American race and memorable for Jeff Gordon in his 23rd and final run of the Daytona 500 standing by with our Jamie Little. Well he started on pole today and had a great run. I know it didn't end the way that you wanted it to but what are you thinking and feeling right now knowing this is it. This is the last one. For some reason I'm still like smiling and enjoyed every moment of it. I mean obviously I enjoyed the first half a lot more in the second half. Uh, what an amazing car we had and you know just out there in the front with our drive in hunger Chevrolet just can Controlling the race and had one restart where I started on the outside and just couldn't get our line going and we got shuffled back and kind of played catch up from that point on but uh, no this was an amazing week an amazing day you know and I, I, I just uh, I don't know I, I'm just in a, this different place that's so foreign to me but so incredible um, to just be taking it all in and enjoying every moment and uh, you know yeah right now I'm a little bit sad this is my final Daytona 500 but I'm more upset we didn't have a shot at winning there at the end but congratulations to Joey Logano I mean that moment you saw there with his dad that's what it's all about you know these types of moments such a big race um, it means so much to all of us and, and you want to share that with the people that you're closest to that have been there along the way so congratulations to him and um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to say other than I enjoyed it. I'm not going to miss those final laps. <laughs> that was just crazy. Uh, but um, certainly would have liked to have had a shot to win it. And if you're over there in Victory Lane, it's awesome and you enjoy it. If you're not in Victory Lane, you're like, oh gosh, when's that, when's that next restrictor plate race? <laughs> We've definitely enjoyed watching you race. The three-time Daytona 500 winner today led a race high, 87 laps. It's been fun for Jeff Gordon. Chris? Thanks, Jen. And, and such class and professionalism right away. Congratulating Joey Logano. You know, Logano got married in the off-season, went on the honeymoon, lost the wedding ring. So already on his second wedding ring for his wife, but his first Daytona 500 trophies. We welcome you back, Trackside. And Michael Waltrip, 55 uh, Toyota, sweating it out. I know you're dripping right out of the car to here, finishing 25th on a, on a wild ride. Describe the atmosphere out there for all the drivers, and what a moment for Joey Logano. Well, just like everyone predicted early in the race, it became a handling race. You had to have a car that would stick in the corners, and our car was really good, and I was driving up through the field, got up inside the top 20, and there was a crash in front of me and got a little bit of damage. And then from then on, I was just uh, behind the eight ball all day long. But congratulations to Joey Logano. Fortunately, I got an idea what that feels like when you get one of those Daytona 500 trophies. I'm so proud of that team, of Joey, the job he does. And uh, really proud also that I've been able to share the track with Jeff Gordon all these years. And uh, that's, that's special, too. Yeah, and Joey in victory lane, uh, you know, thanking Clint Boyer for being a great pusher all day to kind of help him get towards the front and capture the Daytona 500. Let's head back upstairs to Daryl, Larry, and Mike for the unofficial results. Well, we talked about Logano and Harvick. Interesting that Earnhardt and Hamlin finished nose to tail just like last year when it was 1-2. This year it's 3-4. What about that 13 car, Larry? He finished fourth in the unlimited. Casey Mears, he and Booty Barker. What an incredible run for those guys. Good job, boys. You know, it was Joe Logano's ninth career win. I said it at the top of the show. When you win this Daytona 500, it doesn't stay with you the rest of the year. It doesn't stay with you the rest of your career. It stays with you the rest of your life. First thing they say, Daytona 500 winner. Yes, sir. Nice job by substitutes. Last minute uh, fill-ins, Regan Smith and Matt Crafton ending up in the top 20 today. That whole page, that whole page of finishers was pretty, pretty cool, really. Ty Dillon making his first Daytona 500 start, ran up in the top five for a while. And at least eight drivers involved in the final lap pileup, including Jeff Gordon, who comes out of Daytona 33rd, last yeah. car in the lead lap. Matt Kenseth, I thought he had a car that could win this thing. Trouble early on. Tony Stewart, same thing. Thought he had a car that could win. We know Brad did. He was up there leading, fighting for the lead, Brad Keselowski. Well, we'll be off to Atlanta. Let's join Vince Welch. Jimmy Johnson finishes fifth, leads 40 laps today, but where did it slip away at the end? Uh, really, the last two restarts just didn't work for us. Uh, the lane, I was ahead of one lane, and uh, the guys behind us just weren't bumper to bumper. And then on that last restart, same thing on the bottom. Um, so it's just the way things happen, you know. So many other circumstances kind of determine who wins these races, and that's what makes them such a crapshoot. But I'm just excited that we're sitting there three wide, however many deep, with five to go, putting on a killer show. So uh, just a, a fun day here in Daytona. Of course, I wish I was in victory lane right now, but uh, we had a very strong day, nothing to be embarrassed about. Yeah, fun show, fun one to watch today. Jimmy Johnson, fifth at Daytona. Well, Denny Hamlin comes home fourth today, and Denny, with 20 to go, it was three wide, eight deep. Have you ever seen anything like that? 
No, it just uh, these drivers have really just gotten so smart with the side draft and looking in their mirror and and blocking and stuff that uh, you're going to have that. You know, once once the, the the lead gets to three wide, it's just nobody has an advantage because you can't break through it. So proud of our FedEx Express uh, team and everyone at Toyota and Jordan Brand, the Greenbrier, and Coca-Cola. Just gosh, I wish uh, wish we could have done something different. You know, you got a 50-50 shot when you start on the front row in a green white checkered. It just our line, our line didn't form uh, very well on that restart, and that gave the 22 the advantage to break through us pretty quick. Eight days ago, Joey Logano in the Sprint Unlimited got into it with Kevin Harvick, the defending champ, stood up to him after the race, stood up to everybody today. There's your champ in victory lane and a Ford for Roger Penske, Joey Logano. Joey Logano led six different times, not a whole lot of laps, in excess of 500 miles. A green-white checker overtime win at the Daytona 500, once called sliced bread because he wanted a young age at 18 as a pro, but here the Daytona 500 puts him in a special category. Oh, winning this race means everything. And, you know, this might have been the most difficult Daytona 500 ever to win. I've never seen him stock three wide, eight deep, with just a few laps to go for the checker. And I had a good view of it, Chris. There was beating and banging. There was everything you wanted. Joey Logano proved last week that he was going to be tough in Daytona. That car was strong. He pushed hard and he won the race. And he fought off some terrific drivers, Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick, who wound up second, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Victory Lane on Fox Sports 1, a full half hour. In fact, Joey Logano will join us live. He'll come and sit with us at our studio, trackside here in Daytona. Tonight on Fox, Bob's Burgers, The Simpsons back-to-back, -back, Family Guy, and then more of Bob's Burgers before your local news. Next week, we will head to Atlanta, 12.30 Eastern on the pre-race show, 9.30 Pacific. Still one of the fastest places on Earth. And we'll see how Joey Logano will hold up after this emotional win here. For Darrell Waltrip, Mike Joy, and Larry McReynolds, Jamie Little, Vince Welch, Chris Neville, Matt Yoakum, Michael Waltrip, and Andy Petrie, I'm Chris Myers. Get well, Kyle Busch. We're rooting for you, and same for you, Steve Burns. And thanks to all of you for being a part of NASCAR on Fox. And congratulations, Joey Logano. You're the Daytona 500 champ.
This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.